Uh, good evening and welcome to the East Lyme Board of Education meeting for Monday, January 8th, 2018. This is a regularly scheduled meeting. I'll call the meeting to order and for everyone who can rise, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public comment? Anybody want to address the board on any matter concerning uh, the district? Nope. Okay. We'll move on to uh, some minutes that we have. Um, we have the minutes from our December 18th, uh, 2017 regularly scheduled meeting. Um, anyone want to no. make a motion on those? I make a motion to approve the regularly scheduled minutes of December 18th. Okay. Second? Second. Second. Barbara seconds it. Any changes, corrections, modifications to those minutes? No? Are we good with it? Mm -hmm. Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Eric. Eric abstains. Okay, so we've got those, those, those approved. Special reports, we have two students from the, from the high school. Who's, who's gonna go first? Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, so I'd like to talk about the holiday extravaganza that the high school had um, before break, the week before winter break. It was quite a success. We raised money for the Miracle Field. Almost $1,000 was raised. Uh, by selling shirts and other activities throughout the week uh, on the Friday before winter break. In addition to the performances that the high school usually has every year, students also made cards for young children at hospitals too. Um, also, the Ithaca Pella group is coming tomorrow in the auditorium. Uh, so a couple sports events uh, recently as well. Um, past Saturday, the uh, Boys and Girls indoor track team had a uh, meet Rhode Island Classic at URI, um, and they were competing amongst around 20 other teams from Connecticut and Rhode Island, um, and they were very successful. Dylan Hadidrick came in second place in the 55 dash. Uh, Ryan McCauley placed second in the 600 meter dash, um, and the girls 4 by 8 team came in second, and the girls 4 by 4 team came in third. So <coughs> kudos to all those, those runners. Um, also, boys swimming. Um, there's a boys swim meet tomorrow. Um, and in other events at the school, actually one that's kind of been already started and is, is uh, kind of ongoing is the Poetry Out Loud competition. Um, oh, Poetry Out Loud. So on December 20th, there was a workshop for students that were interested in competing in this um, poetry reading and performance competition. And um, next Tuesday, uh, January 16th, the school competition will be held here at 2.30, um, 2.35 in the auditorium. Uh, and the winner of that will advance to the state round, um, which will be held on March 3rd. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Good. good. Any, any questions for? No? <coughs> okay. Good. Great. Well, hopefully it'll stop snowing when you get home. <laughs> good. Be careful. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. We uh, have our first selectman is here. We actually have the first selectman. Wow. wow, it has been a long time since yeah, I've been good. here. It seems good. I was coming to every meeting way, yeah. way back a couple of years ago when we were talking about the school project, which we'll hear an update on tonight. I'll keep my comments brief. I always mm -hmm. welcome questions. Um, that's usually good for conversation and clarity. Um, plans are moving forward for the Main Street Park. I'm sure you read the article in the paper and heard stories about it. We're, we had a six month period of time where we had a, a task force that met about six times. It included a, a landscape architect um, uh, who donated his time for our town. And, um, and we've come up with the best design possible for that little third of an acre down at the end of Pennsylvania Ave on our Main Street. It'll be a park, it will be, there'll be a terrace or a bricked terrace platform uh, semicircle um, that will raise the, um, you know, the topography in that area so when you sit on the bench you can actually see over the tracks and into the water uh, if you, we were to just keep it flat at ground level right now and put benches down you'd be looking at the railroad track bed because there's a raised bed there so that was that's the reason for the design people have asked why why are you going to go up two steps and by the way there will be a wheelchair ramp 
of course, on the side of it. Um, happy to say that we're, we're going we're gonna to be able to do this project without going back to the taxpayers and asking for money. Uh, we have some um, funds and revenue left over from um, um, a, another steep grant project. And also, we purchased this property um, um, on the cheap. Uh, we negotiated a good price and we got it at the right time and we saved some dollars doing that and we also got a brownfield grant in addition to the uh, referendum that we had. So we were able to clean up the property. It was a, a polluted property, don't forget. It's a, it was a, pol a polluted property right next to our water. <laughs> Um, on our main street, so win-win. Uh, we get rid of a, a, a tired-looking building, we create a view, we, we create a park, and we clean up a polluted property where, where pollution potentially could have washed into our sound, and of course, that's, just, that's the water we all swim in, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, happy about that, and again, we have leftover funds from a number of different sources, and we're gonna be creating funds through selling of bricks, uh, memorial bricks, engraved bricks, and uh, it's actually a, that, that story came out and there's already a huge demand of people yeah, lining up. Yeah. We actually have a, a finite number of bricks that we'll be doing. We don't want to kind of cover the place. Um, so, so get in line. I urge you to get in line. Um, uh, the Cheney Park bathrooms are also going through the appropriation process. Set of porta potties. We're going to have actually a water and sewer down at uh, Cheney Park and a and a pretty high sophisticated trailer that we can pull in and out of there. Uh, but it will be a nice place to go. <laughs> um, yeah, I said that. Um, and we're also gonna have dinghy docks uh, down at Cheney Park. That was a part of the original design. And, and they'll be um, on the river side as you're coming down the ramp uh, into the Cheney Park parking lot. It'll be off to the left and maybe under the bridge. And um, that's, that'll be for transient boaters that would come and maybe anchor in our bay or come into the river and find a place to anchor. There's not too many places left because <laughs> frankly we need to dredge that river. Mm -hmm. But uh, we wanna start <coughs> just a small step, to start um, encouraging um, uh, marine tourism. People coming to our port instead of all our boat is going somewhere else. Uh, people visiting East Lyme and coming to the dinghy docks, uh, they could walk to our downtown from there, a pretty handy area, and walk to some of our restaurants. So we're looking forward to uh, that. And um, um, we're about 75% through our snow budget. Yeah. Well, we've had these dinky little two-inchers that are coming at the wrong time too, so we're always having to pull the guys back in in the middle of the night or on a weekend. Or Christmas, um, or Christmas. Or on Christmas <laughs> Eve, right? Uh, or, or tonight, they worked a full day. This is after they worked, you know, uh, Thursday and Friday last week, finally got a weekend off, and sure enough, they worked all day and we had to keep them because this is going on right now outside our doors. Um, but we'll, we, you know, have contingencies for that. We'll take uh, money out of our, uh, the maintenance of the road programs that we, we have, and we'll go back and fund that later in next year's budget. And lastly, the East Line Volunteer Corps, you may have heard a little bit about. It's a program I'm trying to uh, pull together that would encourage people who want to donate time and their talent and their energy to our town to match them up with need, uh, kind of like a match.com for volunteers. Um, uh, we're gonna have a, a link on our on the East Line Town Hall website where you can just enter your information and your specialties, your areas of interest. And once a month, we'll send out an email blast saying here's the opportunities that, would, that match your interests and um, feel free to give them a call. So we won't get too involved with the, um, you know, actually introducing people as much as giving people uh, an opportunity to make the contact. Um, uh, you and I both run into so many people that say, boy, if I knew that was going on, mm -hmm. if I knew you needed help, oh, I wish I knew they would have helped. Well, here's no excuses now. We'll get people to sign up and I think we have a lot of pride in this town and um, a lot of people who are willing to pay it forward. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. I know you have a full agenda. Can questions? I ask a question? Sure. Yep. The dinghy docks, where are you thinking of those? They are, they've been approved by Harbor Management and all the different variety of uh, uh, sources that, that need to uh, approve them. Um, they're going to be kind of where the, um, they're gonna be on the way to Cheney Park and where the gatehouse is down there where they'll yeah. check your pass. Okay. To the left of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just trying to there. visualize it I in think my that's head. Like almost directly <laughs> right into the uh, 
right under the bridge. bridge. Road, road bridge. So actually people yeah. can come in and dock and then go up and have dinner, mm -hmm. walk the boardwalk. It's yeah. Oh, I think that's there. a great idea. And yeah. who's that? Yeah. Who's going to oversee people actually being responsible at parking? It'll be a park. It'll be, a parks, it'll be part of the parks and park rec um, facility uh, as the bathrooms would be. Would we uh, charge for use on the dinghy dock? I think so. I don't think that's like I'm thinking like do. beach pass I, I'm just curious no it's not what you do I guess I mean there's a protocol to all this I think dinghy docks uh, especially town owned ones are, are free to use I and know. Um, you know the plan was much larger we're only building 20 or 25 percent of what the uh, plan was but it would start somewhere I think that's great I just was how many curious it'd be room for five or six boats okay. yeah three three boats on one side and two or three on the other I think it's great yeah. I just there's yeah. also a, a Girl Scout that came uh, to maybe here maybe a selectman meeting that suggested we um, um, install a kayak launcher something like that oh that would be cool um, where you put your kayak or your canoe in this launch thing it holds it oh, and then you can yeah. climb into it and yeah. then it gently releases it's especially handy for those um, with handicaps uh, mm -hmm. that they can get in because kayaks are tough enough to get into <laughs> um, that's why I don't um, so this is you know funky little thing and the Girl Scouts might be helping us out with that that's cool. project that's really uh, cool. Cool. Can I just add, wasn't yeah. there a grant to to make it handicap accessible down for right down by the beaches for wheelchairs to go out to public trust I read in the paper um, I think a few people have posted things on Facebook. I don't think there's any concrete plans on that, although the public trust is the, are the folks that uh, sell the benches yep. and the plaques on the boardwalk and those who yeah. would likely be the people that might, might come up with a, um, it's like a boardwalk that would go yeah, up to like the center. Yeah. 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 It's nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Good. 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 Any other questions? Is it going to be for the, uh, where the gas station was, is there going to be a, some additional lighting or something so that it's kind of... <laughs> So there'll be low-level lighting there. Uh, we really kind of wanted to um, glow but not shine. Yeah. All yeah. right. So um, the the plan is, of course, when we're building this thing, we're also thinking about vandalism and wear and tear. And can this park last? Anything we install needs to last a minimum of 50 years. So we 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 study the bricks, we study the stone wall we're putting in, we study the the, the lighting. Uh, I'm sure we'll have to change a bulb or two in 50 years, but yeah. but the actual. Um, we're going to be putting in granite posts uh, with half moon uh, oh, okay. lighting that yeah. will point down. Um, so there'll be, again, there'll be, it'll be a, a safely lit but not a glowing right. yeah. thing. We'd Good. rather uh, not do that. Yeah. Is there a awesome. rendering somewhere so we can see a rendering? Oh, yeah, it was posted in the paper. There's one in town hall um, as well. Is there one on the, obviously, the town hall website? I don't know. Okay. Uh, no, I more than likely. We've been kind of talking about this plan for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, it, it certainly you can come to the Board of Finance meeting this week and you can observe it. It'll be on TV. You can check it out there. Too. Okay, thank you. Good, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Mark. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, so that concludes the special report. We don't have a consent agenda, and that takes us to our discussion action items for the evening. The first one up is uh, the East Line Public Schools Elementary School Alteration Project, and we have um, two people uh, have come. Um, our architect, Mr. Jakunski, and uh, Laurel Purcell, I got to remember, from ONG um, to uh, give us an update on exactly where we are with the, with the project. And our town building committee chair, Mr. O'Connor, is, is here as well. So, uh, so um, Jeff, anything to make you cover that? Yeah, yeah. That, so yeah. absolutely. Turn it over to. Good evening. Good evening. I don't know if you noticed, but the two gentlemen from the high school were using their smartphones for notes. <coughs> I can't see text that small, so I have paper notes. <laughs> um, there's handouts for you. I think you can just keep your card. You don't mind taking one and passing it down with the updated project scope for all three buildings. <coughs> We're going to start with uh, 
uh, with Lily B. Haynes. Um, just uh, general for all three buildings, the first items, one through 32, and the numbers change a little bit for the other buildings, are the original project scope that was approved pre-referendum. Some of the items are crossed out because they're replaced by other items that were added post-referendum, which are the items on the bottom. Uh, also, next to some of the individual items are, are parts of the project that are going to be bid as alternates. We definitely have to control the budget to the amount of money that was approved, and we did develop some alternates for, for some of the items. I am not going to go over in detail over this entire list. Most of you know what the project scope is. I'll just give you a general overview uh, on each building. Um, from a drawing development point of view, we are probably about 95% complete with the documents. We have a state review, which is called a PCR meeting scheduled for the 23rd. Uh, next week, I'm meeting with the building official, uh, fire marshal, and your health official to sign off on a form called SCG-042, which, Tim, I guess you're going to address later in the meeting. Mm -hmm. It will require your signature also endorsement by the superintendent and the chairperson uh, of, the, uh, of the Board of Ed. Um, Laurel's been very busy with phasing, meeting with all the principals, and she'll go over some of the phasing plans and schedule um, for each project. Uh, we're going to start with Lily. We're going from the largest building to smallest, so Lily Haynes will be the first one going. Now, this this plan is a blow-up plan of this section of the building. Uh, the main entrance, just to give you an orientation, is right there. Uh, for every school, you may remember from the very beginning, we are introducing security at the front entry vestibule. Uh, there'll be a man lock as you walk into the building. You will be forced to go into the office. You will not have access into the building. Did you say a man lock? A man lock, so a personal lock. Them in, in there will be a physical barrier where the secondary doors leading to the school will always be locked. So mm -hmm. like what they have in the bank? Yes. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. So now again, if you have access to the building, if you have a fob that, that could open those doors, you could obviously could go right through. But a visitor will be forced into that person lock, let's say for lack of a better term, will be forced to enter into the main office, and then if, if that person is allowed to go into the school, they'll be, they'll be able to be buzzed in into the rest of the building. And that holds true for all three, all three schools. And that's bulletproof? Pardon me? I know this is a silly question, but is it bulletproof? Uh, there, it's not lock? bulletproof glass. It is shatter resistant glass. Okay. Uh, uh, all three schools have hurricane windows in it, so it's rated for 120 mile an hour, two by four, being shot out of a cannon. So you really can't go up there and break it with a baseball bat. If you shoot at it with a bullet, it will shatter. Okay. But I can also tell you, we do a lot of public safety conferences. Stanford Police is one of the projects that we're, uh, that's in construction right now. Bulletproof glass is not technically bulletproof, it is bullet resistant. Okay. If you continue to shoot through that glass, it will go through. I think a better means of security is visual control to the inside of the building, mm -hmm. and we do have that because the glass is tinted, so during the day, you really can't see inside, even with lights on inside. At night, you can. Obviously, with being darker on the outside and lighter on the inside, you will be able to see. But I think the visual uh, component is more important than the actual bulletproof component. Uh, as a matter of fact, Jeff sent me over some regulations that were enacted as of the uh, as of the Sandy Hook incident, and the state did publish some regulations and requirements on projects that are state funded. And we are meeting those requirements with shadow resistancy and access control in the in each office. Uh, one of the main items that was discussed early on in the I guess, yes. so I just want to make sure so. You come through the main entrance to the second door. If the office buzzes you in, then you get to go through the office to get into the school? Correct. The office, so everybody the office can buzz you in through that secondary door. Oh, through the secondary, which goes right into the school. So you don't, right everyone doesn't school. flow through the office no. to get. Oh, no, they can't. During the school day, technically. Exactly. Yeah. Or if you have an well, assembly yeah. Exactly. During the school days, you can just unlock those doors. They're right. electronic hardware. You program it that, let's say, at, at yeah. 5 30 or 6 o'clock, the doors remain open. It's really up to you how you control it. So in the evenings, when the schools are used, the, it'll just be double open? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Very flexible. Uh, one of the um, uh, big items of discussion during pre-referendum is re repurposing the existing small gym back into a gym, and that we're doing that. Uh, there's quite a bit of renovation within the interior portion. We're creating some, some new rooms. Every single toilet facility is brand new with fixtures, handicap accessibility, finishes, lighting, flooring. 
Um, obviously, all new flooring, all new finishes, lockers in every building, new lighting, et cetera. I'm gonna go over some of the items that were added post-referendum that came up during discussions, which is on the bottom of your sheet. And I'll go over uh, Haynes first, and then we'll, we'll go into Flanders and Niantic. Window replacement in, in the remainder of the building. We have no window replacement at Haynes. Those windows in the front portion of the building are relatively new. We were asked to look at those windows. That will be bid as an alternate if we could afford it. Obviously, on the building committee decides we, we can proceed with that. Spot masonry restoration, including chimney. Uh, we did identify some areas of deteriorated masonry. We are adding that to the project as an alternate. The chimney actually is going to be reduced in size by the fact that we're going to, to a more modern boiler system. We don't need the height of the chimney for draft, but that chimney actually is going to be lowered. Replacing the folding partition in the gym really was never part of the original scope. We are adding it as an alternate. Uh, main office nurses suite reconfiguration. In actuality, we did not have that at Haynes originally, but you know, if you're gonna have three comparable buildings and we're doing office reconfiguration at both Niantic and Flanders, we did incorporate that into, into Haynes. Uh, so the office is completely reconfigured, especially the front part of the office, which I'm sure everybody knows is, is, is pretty tight. That is bid as a base bid. We're not bidding that as an alternate and it does fall in within a budget. New emergency generator. Uh, the project uh, envisioned battery operated emergency lighting. Um, our, my mechanical electrical plumbing engineer, BVH Integrated Services, suggested that we look into generators. Long term, it is a savings for you. You're not replacing batteries in these packs. Um, but even with that, we are gonna bid the generators an alternate. New fire alarm system, that came up early in the projects. Uh, once we started looking into your existing fire alarm system, not only do they not meet current code, they actually don't work. Some of the devices uh, don't work at all. I spoke with the fire marshal early on in the project and the fire marshal said that it definitely has to come in. Even though it's noted as an alternate, we're only putting that in just to see what the cost of that is. But I could tell you that the fire alarm system will have to be done in, in all three buildings. Replace pneumatic controls. Your existing heating system is controlled by by air going through little copper tubes. It's an archaic system, it's not very precise. Uh, we are introducing an alternate to replace that with the DVC, which is direct digital control system, which will allow you to remotely control um, all the buildings. Replace intercom speakers. That kind of came out in Flanders, uh, where we had a lot of ceiling replacement. And in Flanders, I think there's about 20 different speakers that you have there, some work, some don't. Uh, it's not a very expensive item, but we did, uh, we did add that to the project. Again, bid as an alternate. Uh, install a new clock system. Um, actually, I don't think you have clock systems in any of your schools that, that truly work. I think it's just <laughs> little battery-operated clocks that hang up on a wall, so that is also as an alternate. And replace network backbone cabling. What that eliminated is the UPS, uh, I'm sorry, is the upgrade to the Wi-Fi system. We had several meetings with your IT director, and, and we felt that we better to give you a backbone system that could meet the future demands of some of the devices you connect to it instead of just upgrading Wi-Fi. And plus, you could buy some of your devices off that grant, Jeff, that's available to you, which would be a lot more cost-effective than doing it through this project. So that's, uh, that's Haynes. Can I, a couple questions? Yes, sir. So we're gonna get a price list of each of these 10 items, is that the, the that step? Is correct. And then we're gonna, we decide which ones we wanna do. That's correct. Which we're gonna pour in. As and well we will as go over the budget and how those items are priced as alternates, because ONG did price those items already as, a, uh, as part of the budget. So then we're gonna also prioritize this, like the fire alarm system, appear to be the highest priority. Absolutely. Um, and then, so so there will be, the building town committee will prioritize, come up and see what they'll makes sense. Yep, they'll make a, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll make a, a major recommendation. I don't, it depends on how the bidding all comes back, but um, you know, and it, and it could say, and here's, here are, is their recommendation for what should be added in, here's what maybe should be deleted. You know, I mean, I just don't, you just don't know how the, yeah. how the bidding's gonna come in. We're, we're optimistic, but you know, you just don't know until, until you get to that point. The numbering of the alternates isn't necessarily the, the priority list. And right. fortunately in Connecticut, we're not required to take the alternates as they're listed. For example, in Massachusetts, 
that you have alternate one and two, you have to take alternate one before you take alternate two. That's just the bidding regulation. In Connecticut, fortunately, we don't have to do that. So you'll be able to make a decision based on priority, which the building committee will determine, and also what the cost of that item is too. But you could accept alternate six and not accept alternate two, whatever it is. So it gives us a lot of flexibility during bidding. So for the replaced folding partition in the large gym, I guess mm -hmm. I'd be interested, not necessarily in our discussion, but if we have two gyms, do we actually need a folding partition anymore? Or if you just do something on a cheaper, like, you know, some like just curtains, the curtains yeah. and stuff, yeah. which is pretty yep. easy, that was but yeah. Let's come up for, yep. yeah. yeah, let's come up. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Again, the partition is there. It works, it works, but again, it's a little bit tired. And once you have all new finishes everywhere, including paint and refinished floor. It's a little bit of a safety issue when you're playing sports, is it? It's when it's, it's out, but it, it's not. I'd rather not be there. It just adds more space. Um, and if you have a second gym, you may not need it, but um, one person's opinion. No, no. Uh, Flanders, um, again, same safety features at the main entrance. Uh, this happens to be uh, the right side of the building. You see the gym there. Here's the main entrance right here. I don't know if you can see that, but we're basically, there's, you have a vestibule door that's right about halfway through this present vestibule. We're basically extending that door out to the corner, right next to the doors as you enter the multi-purpose room on the left-hand side. So that's our person lock. Uh, we have a set of doors that enters into the main office. The main office in Flanders is quite a bit larger than it is presently. I'm, I'm sure everybody knows how tight it is now. We're actually engulfing two classrooms uh, on that side of the building, and the nurse's suite is located right in that area. And I think you may remember I mentioned that in the nurse's suite, we have an exterior door that leads right into the nurse's area. I think it's a little bit problematic when you have someone wheeled out on the stretch if that person isn't wheeled out through the, uh, through the hallway, but there's access right into the nurse's suite. Handicapped bathrooms. Um, um, Linda's office is about twice the size that it is right now, so it's about 40 square feet now instead of 20 square feet. That's <laughs> a joke, it's a little bit larger, 40 square feet. But very small office that she's working in right now. Uh, we did reconfigure the bathrooms uh, next to the multi-purpose room. Uh, big difference, right now, the boys and girls' bathrooms, actually, you could walk through them. Uh, you could enter on this side and then walk through the other side. Uh, we've changed that, but then these bathrooms are also located where they're close to uh, your core facilities, the gym and the multi-purpose room that could be used easily during the evening. And there's adult uh, bathrooms in the front and then boys and girls in the back. I'm not going to go over the classroom configuration that was done with principals, but classes did move around a little bit. Um, you may remember that we don't have ceilings in this corridor. We do have ceilings in classrooms. We did have enough room to be able to incorporate ceilings there. They'll be right above the bottom of the beam, but we, are, we do have ceilings there also. Again, every single school, new air conditioning, ventilation system, and it, we did improve vastly on the type of uh, HVAC system that we're including, which is a fully ducted system. There was quite a bit of discussion at the level of the building committee meeting, but it was felt uh, by everyone it was definitely worth the additional cost, even though we're still on budget. We'll go over that uh, in a second to introduce that, uh, uh, that system for all three buildings. Uh, the items that were added on the bottom, 11 for Flanders, uh, additional window replacement. We had only the front of the building, which is the original part of the building, as part of the base bid. We did not incorporate the windows and back. So again, that will be bid as an alternate. New generator, alternate fire alarm system. Remove underground oil tank. Uh, you now have gas service in Flanders. There's no sense to have that tank. That tank will be removed as part of the base bid. It's actually a savings for us because we're not replacing the tank. We're just taking it out and filling the hole in. By the way, where that tank is now will be where your generator is going to be placed if that alternate is accepted. Uh, convert boiler to natural gas. That's a base bid. Pneumatic controls, intercom speakers, and clock system. Uh, also alternates. There's a small paved play area in back of the building. Um, I'm not sure how that was missed during the pre rep It's a small area, it's not very expensive. Um, Linda asked if we could incorporate that into the project as an alternate, just to repave that. That's also will be bid as an alternate. Originally at Flanders, we were painting the existing lockers. 
but there's only lockers in the third and fourth grade way in the deck. There are actually no lockers in the front of the building. So instead of painting them, we are introducing new 340 lockers and replace network backbone cabling. Again, that replaces the upgrading of the, of the Wi-Fi in the school. Can I ask one security question? Sorry, mm -hmm. yep, go right in. So if there's, there's multiple ways to get in out of a school, but only one way into the school, right? Because there'll be other doors. There will be. So are those, so if someone props open a door or something like that, is there a buzzer to the office or something to know that if someone's opening those doors or how does that work? There, there will be, all exterior doors into the building will be controlled by props. So every door leading out of the hallway will be controlled by an electronic devices. Those devices be given to teachers. If they go outside with students, they can then close the door and open it with that prop. Uh, doors like from boiler rooms, etc. obviously those aren't controlled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If a door is left open, yeah. the, 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 whoever is monitoring that system will know that that door is open. Okay, that's what I, yes. That's Whether there's a buzzer there or not, I don't know. I'm okay. sure that's And program. all, all the doors are new, are gonna yeah, be All new. doors are brand all, new, all, all replaced. All buildings, okay. that's, that's part of the base okay. bid. Uh, Niantic Center, our famous fish, fish school. I think I just learned that those fishes were donated by the uh, Mystic Aquarium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <coughs> and the building official also told me that there was a section that had to be cut out that was blocking the window because I guess that material is a little bit flammable and they were worried if it catches on fire, it will go into the building. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting story that I heard about, the, about your fish. Fortunately, Niantic is, uh, is smaller than the other three buildings, and we were able to get the entire entire plan on one sheet. There's a second floor component to this. Let's talk about the canopies. Um, you may remember we developed uh, renderings for the, all three canopies. Uh, they were pretty elaborate and much larger, especially the canopy that you have at Niantic, which is no canopy at all. Right. Um, <laughs> the canopy ultimate to, to basically built them at that size is about $943,000 more. So we're, we are bidding the canopy base bid, only the sections that come out of each door. So for example, at Haynes, only that front section. At, at Flanders, for now, for the base bid, we're retaining the existing canopy and then bidding the new canopies as alternates. So in other words, if we eliminate just the front section on Niantic Center and the front section where the three pyramids are, uh, at Haynes, that's about a $943,000 savings. And again, we do have it incorporated in the budget and you'll see those numbers, but just to, just to be safe, we, we are bidding those canopies as alternates. So on um, Niantic Center, the biggest change in the floor plan is the front office reconfiguration. Right now, your front office is in the middle of the building, very little visual control over the front door. A uh, person walks in, has to meander through the hallway to get in the office. Uh, we've completely flipped this entire area. The toilets that are were here, that are presently here, are now back into that, in, in this section of the building that's right up to the classroom that's up against that stair. Uh, the main office is right there. The vestibule really doesn't change. That vestibule that you have at Niantic Center works very well other than we're installing new doors. So you basically walk into the vestibule, uh, here's your security door, secondary security. By the way, the front doors will also be under security. It's not that, like you could walk into the vestibule. You'll need to be buzzed in through the front door also. Um, into the office uh, door, and by the way, there is visual connection to the vestibule. There's glass there. Main office, uh, a workroom. Uh, Jeff is right in here, principal's office. Then we meander through the hallway into a, the new nurse's suite. Um, sm every nurse is going to have a small little office, and that came out out of privacy concerns. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when a nurse has to speak to parents, uh, obviously she doesn't have a place to go in. I, I was told the Flanders nurse actually goes out of the suite into another room. So we did develop some, uh, some small little offices. It's just a glass enclosed uh, uh, area for the nurse to be able to have private conversations. Two uh, cubicles um, uh, in each um, uh, in each of the uh, nurses' layouts, and again, a door directly leading to the outside. Um, on Niantic Center, uh, the additional items that were, uh, that were uh, done or asked to be looked at post-referendum, site lighting. Uh, right now, site lighting at Niantic Center are basically wall packs around the building. Uh, we do have that incorporated, will be bid as an alternate. Overflow parking in back of the building, there's a paved play area there 
um, that we're gonna repave and allow cars to travel either from um, Patagansic, I think it's the road, yeah. from Patagansic <coughs> to the gate, or actually we're gonna develop an access that will be closed around that area to access that part of the, part of the uh, parking lot. Generator, fire alarm system, pneumatic controls, intercom and clock, all bit as alternates. Uh, kitchen exhaust uh, duct coat correction. We can't bid that as an alternate. There is a coat violation in the existing duct that's there in the kitchen. Uh, that'll be bid uh, as, a, um, um, as a base bid. We need to rate the chase. It has to be a fire rating and in install dampers on there. Um, install 320 quarter lockers. We have no lockers in the referendum phase at Niantic Center. Again, to make sure that all schools are equitable or equal in function, uh, we are introducing lockers. Replace network backboard cabling that replaces the Wi-Fi and front entry skylight. Uh, there's a large skylight. It's this bubble dome at the front entry. It's presently not leaking, but the seals are broken. If you look through that skylight, you see a lot of fogging in between. We do have that as an alternate. And I believe it's about a $40,000 light item. Uh, so again, if prices come in as we hope that they'll come in, uh, we'll be able to accept that alternate as part of the base bid. Any questions? Questions? Tim, do you want to talk about the SCG 042? Uh, we, we can, or let's see. Um, or we can talk about it now, or we can talk about it. Oh, wait, 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 why don't we get? Okay. Yeah, get through sure. all the stuff. Sure. It's just, it's just. Yeah. <coughs> um, and with that, I'd like to introduce. Oh, can I get one? Sure. I can, not for one. Can, when we look at any um, backboard rims that we're replacing and ports, can we make sure that if they're replaced, that they're adjustable? Adjustable. Yeah. Now we're only we're only replacing the base fit at Niantic Center. We're right. not doing anything about the new ones in the in the small gym. Yes, they'll be adjustable. In Niantic Center and the Lily B. And Lily B. Okay. But we're not replacing the existing backboards in the existing gym at uh, Haynes and the existing gym at Flanders. Okay. That's fine. Any, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that we need, but anyone that we're putting in new, make sure they're yes. adjustable. But new floors, yeah. new <coughs> synthetic yeah. floors at Flanders and at Niantic Center. The floor at Niantic Center is basically yeah. UCP tile. It's yeah, actually yeah. DAP tile, asbestos tile, so yeah, we yeah. have to replace that. Yeah. We're refinishing the existing floor uh, at Haynes, and then we're putting in a new wood floor in the small gym new at Haynes floor, yeah. because there's no way we could repurpose that. There's nails and screws with the temporary walls that will install it. So Flanders, we're, we're, we are putting in a new floor? We are putting in a new floor, and yes. And need it? Yep. It's a wood floor, floor is hazard. Right. No. no, Flanders, we can't put in a wood floor because we don't have the depression in the existing concrete. Um, I need about two to three inches of depression to be able to put in a wood floor. So that has to go back to the same type of floor that that's, that's there now. Same uh, holes for uh, Niantic Center. Center. Um, but again, the floor is depressed with the existing wood floor that's there. The concrete is de depressed at Haines, so we're going back with the wood floor there. Yeah. It'd be very expensive to chop all that concrete up. Not worth it. Okay. Good. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to introduce Laurel Purcell. Uh, we've been, we're probably on a phone or email 10 times a day. Uh, my wife is already starting to ask who is this Laurel person, so I'll have to invite her to the <laughs> Okay, I may want to use your plan. Sure. Um, thank you very much. Again, Laurel Purcell with ONG Industries, and just so that you understand the process of phasing, and I guess I'll go back back in the same order as um, Al presented. So we'll start with Haynes. I do have a few handouts. But just the order is I've met on a weekly basis with all three principals, Linda, Melissa, and Jeff, and they've been great partners. They've made the process really great. Um, it was very consistent. We met. So they always nice. had ideas. We would talk about issues, they would have answers, um, and have everything um, done well. So it was a really great process. So just to get, I have just a few handouts to share. I'm sure we get it to you electronically, but we'll just go through really the names that's on the screen behind you. So you'll see that there's phases one through four, and you're gonna see that this is reflected in each of the three school projects as of right now. Yeah. I'm trying to orient myself. Thank you. You're welcome. You should. Okay, so. This is the learn way, right? Mm -hmm. The whole idea with phasing is how many classrooms can be indicated so that we can work on an area. My whole approach is how do we separate ourselves from 
school and the students. We want as, as much separation as possible. We want a clear way into the building. We want to seriate, seriate ourselves with fencing. We don't want crossing of contractor personnel and students. So in our case at Haynes, we grabbed this big um, wing down here. Which way do you want? The front of the building is this way. No, the north is where that yellow wing is. Yeah. But you're right, though. That's, yeah. that's the front of the building. That's, that's the front of the building. All right, so it's in the back. And this is the barn way. So this is all going to be K1 and 2 in the end. All right, so we're going to do that wing first. And the way that we can separate ourselves is we can basically block the corridor and we can have access to the back of the building. There's some, like, a maintenance area where people hold the main tank and whatnot. So we plan on keeping access in the back there. And at the same time, we're going to work on the front of the building and do all of that work. That this um, this work is extensive when it comes to this reconfiguration. There's, there's concrete, there's structural work involved, so it's um, it's something that we want to get done right away. And in the meantime, the main office is going to shift over. So if you're driving into the front of the school, she uh, the principal is going to be the principal and her staff are going to be occupying two of the classrooms. So actually, the, the main office is going to shift to this other hallway here. And you'll see that phase one is gonna be starting in the summer, and it's gonna run through, I'm showing you here as November, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have it go until <coughs> December. I just have What's your staging area? area? Where around the school is your staging the area? The staging area, I did not bring any sort of site logistics yet. I don't know how familiar you are with the site, you don't have any site plans, for it, right? If you were in the front of Haynes, if you were at the front of Haynes, there are a few islands, they're grassy islands, mm -hmm. that are along the, the, the road. Mm -hmm. I actually want to put our ONG field office right in the front there. Right about okay. there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The front of the There's actually two trees that we have to demolish, and then they'll get. We'll get the trees in the end. But we'll cut the trees down first. We'll put our 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 own teacher office there to put union control people coming into the school. And staging for phase one will be towards the back. It's be towards the rear of the building. We need to be able to get dumpsters <coughs> and items like that as close as we can to the building. So. Um, also, Haynes is the most common <coughs> as far as the site site work. We're re totally reconfiguring the whole front entrance, mm -hmm. and our plan right now is to only, I don't know how familiar you are with the final plan, but half, half of one side is going to be the bus loop and some parking. Mm -hmm. The other half is going to be a student drop-off, a uh, parent drop-off. Mm -hmm. So we're going to plan on this summer finishing the whole left side, which is the bus loop, uh, but not treat it as a bus, so just to give you part to give parking, and I'll still be working on the right side, so that will give me clear access into the front of the building. So those plans will be developed. We just finished the building phasing as of like last week, so we, I will then shift to doing all the site phasing and all of these documents we part of the bid so the contractors understand how the work will go. So once we're done with phase one, which I'm thinking is going to be December, even though it says November. We will then switch to this other area that's mm -hmm. in towards the back, which is the media center, which is the computer lab. This is where the current third grade is, the art, room. Um, art room. So they're going to be up next, and that would be from, say, January 2nd to April break, because April's not going to change. And then phase three is going to be this big area here. Um, it's going to be where the pre-K is, yes. that small gym, um, and renovating the existing gym. And what's left will be the cafeteria, which we obviously on all three schools can't do all school sessions, so it will have to be a summer, and it will be the second summer, which is the summer of 19. And you'll see that group of, uh, that last group of four classrooms, if learn, learn moves out earlier, I would like to start those because we have exactly the eight classrooms and get that ahead of the summer, just gives us a little more breathing room. But we do plan on doing this in four phases. What are you doing with the area? That is white Hatched. with yeah. Well, area. This is not part of this project. Okay, I couldn't remember. Barbara, Barbara. Yeah. So there are some places like when you're doing phase two, right, which are presently classrooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have have we discussed where the kids are going during that time, or we haven't done that yet? Yes, we have done that. Uh, I've worked ex ex extensively with Melissa, and we have a plan. I didn't share it with you, but I do have a bubble. I have a bubble plan of every room that's available, each phase, and where everybody's going. So we have that all settled. We're right. going on a temporary basis so people will know. So everybody's staying within the building. Everybody yes. is yes. Well, well, hold on. There's two people leaving. Oh. Director? Oh, the bus director. And somebody else. Uh, 
BCBA. Okay, but the class, the kids are staying. Yes. Kids are staying. Okay, yeah. that's, that's and what I want. Staff is in, has been involved, listen, they, they're aware of, yeah. of okay, where yeah. people are going. And that's great. So, yeah. And the whole objective is to try to only move people once, as much as possible. Got Unfortunately, it. some well, it's people, it's not in classrooms, it will end up being staff that maybe um, be staff offices and whatnot, they, they may have to move, well, ABA may have to move a couple of times. Also, Laurel, if I'm not mistaken, we're using the small gym for temporary classrooms? Yes, yeah, so right now there are four <laughs> small, there are four classrooms that are built in there now yeah. without ceilings. Yeah. One of them is a motor room. We're going to leave the motor room the way it is for now because it works, it works. But we're going to put ceilings and light fixtures in the other three from a sound perspective. And we're going to use them as our temporary swing space all the way until phase three. Obviously, phase three gets yeah. demolished. Mm -hmm. So also with each of these phases, um, and I don't have that here, is where we plan on putting temporary partitions, and this is something that has to be fully blessed by the fire marshal. So again, that's also something that is included in the bid documents, exactly where partitions will go, because they're also concerned about us having egress in case there's something on our side. So we have to account for everybody in the building um, while we're working in there. Laura, just some questions over here. I answered my own question. Yep, yeah. thank you. There you go. Oh, you're so. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll hop right up there. <laughs> you're good. Landers Turn your own questions off huh? there. I just needed to read the dates a little more carefully. We had been having a struggle coming up with swing space for Flanders. Flanders, there was not nearly as much um, extra room. Uh, the other two schools, there was, more, there was what appeared to be almost plenty of swing space in order to get through the four phases. Um, Flanders was much more challenging, and it had to be a lot of work and a lot, you know, a lot of time spent figuring out what the, what the plan may be. And um, the current plan is to actually build, and I have this on the screen before, but to build yeah, three classrooms in the existing gym. So we're, we would fold, close a folding partition and use um, half of the gym and build three temporary part, um, classrooms in there. We also are going to be using what's going to amount to five classrooms in the central office. That was good? Yeah. <laughs> Letting everybody soak that in. Yeah. 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 And wave the hands yeah. yeah. It's the same, it's same building. It's the same building. I know. Exactly. It's the same building. The kids contained between the two buildings. Um, yeah. The amount of time that it would be utilized, I mean, how much time really that's going to be utilized as a swing space? It will be for one full school year. One full so it will be the year of 18 okay. 19. It will be okay. next school year. So it's one yeah. of the school year. Okay, no, so I don't, I don't know if the <laughs> Willie B. Haynes, because when they use those classrooms, it was a noise issue. So are you going to put, I mean, is there a way to, to cheaply or economically kind of control when you have five Are you referring plus? to the small the small gymnasium where the classrooms currently exist now? And Willie B. Haynes, and then you say you're going to do that. Yes, yeah, so they, they will have ceilings. They'll be ceilings just like this. So that will control the noise. Right now there are no ceilings there. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so I have to think for a second. And that's what you're going to do. Can't do that. This is these have high ceilings in this area. Yeah, well, we'll we'll make it just like this. It'll you'll walk into the classroom and the, the ceiling height will be low. It'll be drywall. Temporary low. drop light, yeah, but, no temporary. Temporary. but no natural light. <laughs> but no natural light, no. Mm -hmm. well, no. And again, that's a for a short time. It's, that it's will be for a short time. Okay. Is that will be one phase. I think yeah. look at it as an investment. I just the space versus any type of trailer or oh, anything gosh, else yeah. outside. <laughs> 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 right. It's better than Modular. using a trailer or yeah. moving kids yeah. back yeah. and yeah. forth Absolutely. to schools. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 There's nothing wrong with from a ventilation standpoint. They'll have fresh air. They'll survive. They'll do life safety and good for every phase. Well, they'll survive. Kids are resilient. It'll be like a game. It'll be an adventure. Thank you for saying that. We're it will be an adventure. Kids will see it as an adventure. I, well, we got to sell it. Project with Jeff, he was my principal in Montville, and kids yeah. love it. I think you're going to have a bigger challenge with teachers than you are with kids. But this is for the kids, fun. and I can tell you they find it very interesting. They find it interesting with the trucks moving around. They find it interesting with what's in the ceiling after the ceilings are removed. It's, it's, it's oh, going to yeah, be it's cool. It will. It, they can even make a learning experience out of it. Thank you, too. There you go. I think I mentioned this before. I'll be more than happy to have a classroom of what's in the ceiling, which they can't see now because these tabs are there. The little tabs are going to be gone. I'll show them what that pipe does, but, but so it's fun. Yeah, it is fun.
right, so um, again, we can easily isolate that. I was going to ask about basketball. Go ahead. Question? Probably several. So, basketball. So, so a, a couple things. So one is, have we thought about taking kindergarten for that year and putting it at another school? So yes. not having any kindergarten at that school? Yes, we thought about moving um, moving classes out of the building. Yes. Well, new kind of, so it's the new, so, so they never were in a school. So it's not moving kids out of a school because they were never in a school. Um, so, so have we thought about that to create some space? Two is, and you know, I'm not totally frustrated, but a little frustrated is, you know, we've talked about redistricting. One of the challenges we have with Flanders is it's filled to the, to the brim, and we didn't redistrict um, to balance. And now we're sitting here, um, and yeah, I, I mean, we're creating temporary classrooms, which yes, is better than um, trailers, um, absolutely. And it's better than but a shuffle. You're, so you're gonna have a school with 340 kids in it with a gym that's, you know, not even the size of this room? No, it's pretty much. You said you're taking half, of, you're yeah, taking half away, so what's left is gonna be. Which is well, if you, if you take a look at that plan, here's a, actually that's a good slice. Here's a standard classroom right here. You could get three of those in that half. So it is, it is about three times the size of the standard classroom. I'm, I'm worried about, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about the gym side. So. Right, which is this side right here. Right. Right, so that. It's gonna be half so, the gym. So during the, like how are the, kids need activity and to do stuff, so where are they gonna do stuff? We were looking at six classrooms in there. Yeah, and, <laughs> and kids go to the high school for the gym. Um, oh yeah, you know, half the gym. There, Yeah, there, there is still okay. maybe opportunities uh, for that. Um, you know, the, possibly using some of the South Gym. Outside, obviously, when spring fall, yeah, yeah, nice yeah, days, yeah. kids are gonna be outside yeah, for gym. Be, uh, the cafeteria the as well mm -hmm. um, is gonna be used, <clears throat> could be used some gym time so we talked about all those options she is going to take them out as much as she can we're going to contact mike susie at some point in time too and be <laughs> 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 um, i mean kids need they do. to burn off There's especially the younger kids resources need to burn off right energy. There. so yes right if they there. can get in the That's south right. gym at yeah. high school or something <laughs> fantastic but we need to have some vehicle for the kids well, in the winter, the half gym to shut yeah. out the door. You know, we're, we've already been thinking about where else they're going to go. Or oh, where else they got to be creative with that. That's yeah. you're right. They're, and they're they lucky, but they're lucky that they're next to the high school that they can yeah, yeah, utilize right. the gym yeah, at the really high school. This isn't for a huge chunk of time. And it's not either. forever. It's a no. it's a year. It's, it's a year. Um, and again, it's a phased component uh, too. Thank you. Well, I don't have a question. I have a comment. I was just I was just going to say that that um, the good news was when we we met um, last week with the fire marshal and the town building person and on the use of the space in central office and absolutely no issue from a uh, safety perspective. Um, and it since it's temporary use, has no problem. So there'll be three three classrooms on the second floor and two classrooms on the first floor, Jeff and Amy, as well as Lee and, and um, uh, Lynn's space will be, will be the two, that will turn into two classrooms. So they, they will be, we will have a su Mark, superintendent. Mark has invited us down to his office yep. at Tampa, we declined. <laughs> so we'll Mark, but, uh, yeah, we're gonna vacate. We're looking at space at the middle school. Um, there's some opportunity over there, so we can, we can be stationary. Um, and we're also still looking at, you know, our downstairs configuration as well at central office mm, too, that's right. uh, where we have uh, facilities and, and IT, so. And again, well, that's good. Good. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like I went in fifth grade in that building. Fire coats I was gonna say, didn't fifth grade at Flanders years ago used to be in the cafeteria? In the office. Yeah, that was they were. so much so fun. Yeah. 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 Lee, you were, weren't you? I was, yeah, I, I had fifth grade in the central office. Yeah, my daughter, yeah, Brenda. Because we had a big class, yeah. Exciting. It was great, I thought, I felt special. You are special. You want to come back and visit Lee? You're welcome. Thank you. Have fun, man.
Ask what what is 1A? This is just a little funky um, situation I have at Niantic where I have to replace a wall between two phases. Up and down? Yeah, the first step to turn. <coughs> so it's just for me to be able to tell the contractors that we need to be home around right there. So. Can I ask why we have to replace the wall? It is one of the, 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 the mountable right. partitions. It's the, it's the walls are very similar to the ones that you have in the third and fourth grade wing at Flanders. They're basically, they stop at the ceiling. There's no rating between them. There's no sight off of the sound separation. I, I, I don't think you can really keep them. I was just curious. I, I, that, I was, that was in the original project. Okay. In the original project. It was just that weird. It's a weird strike <laughs> because it has um, casework against it, and, I, and there's casework there now, which means there's a cabinet and a sink. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I, in order to take the wall out and replace it in the summer, which is what I have to do it, I won't have the new sink to go back. So when the, that teacher comes in next um, next fall, she has she's nothing. Not going to sink anymore. <coughs> I have it in the front door. Gotcha. You know, the name of that, we had talked about that, and Pat also remember that, that those are the walls with the smart board. Yeah. Oh, the smart the board walls. Because walls. Uh, uh, hey. it was the only school that I saw. There was that like mm -hmm. um, a. <laughs> Any other questions on phasing? I got scheduled. Um, in terms of the like parking lots and the lighting, is that happening in the first summer, summer of 2018? Parking lots only at Haynes am I going to try to get that one the bus loop. done. Um, lights, we won't, <coughs> have we won't have lights this time. I'm going to figure that one out. Doesn't show a lot of new pictures. Um, but for the most part, all of the flat work will be done. All the asphalt, pavement, concrete sidewalks. 
sidewalks, anything like that, curbs. Mm -hmm. At Niantic, I think I'm gonna hold off on doing all their site work until the second summer because I want it, if you're familiar with that school, you drive into the front, there's that nice, um, I believe it's the parent drop off, yep. the loop on mm -hmm. the right. I, I wanna cut that so it's got a long island. It has a huge through. island. I want it to cut, cut an opening through, through halfway down that island and have the, the parents have a shorter loop and then I wanna have the whole back of that as our staging area, I just want to stage over there because there's not much okay. of accessible site around, so we want to take a, take over about half of that parking lot there for all of our store, storage and staging mm -hmm. during construction. And when you're coming in the driveway, right on the right-hand side, there's kind of a little knoll mm -hmm. island there. I just want to kind of regrade that, and that's where our OMP trail will be. We always want to Flatten be it out. center so that we catch people as they come into the site for deliveries and whatnot. All right, so if Bill, Bill yeah. I had a question. I just, uh, what's the um, temporary cafeteria plan for all these schools? Are kids going to even? It looks like it's over the summer. No, over the summer. All all can you answer that? Oh, they're all. Looks like they're all done yeah. over the summer. Uh, yeah, that'll be over the summer. <laughs> 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 that was something from a board event standpoint. You're doing your calendar school year for 1920. 20. I think the longest summer in 19 days. No, so as soon as possible, as soon as possible. <laughs> we'll I need that second summer. Yeah. A lot of work to be done. Yeah. Does that align with the calendar? 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 Right, this might be a little more information than you wanted, but excuse me, so I know this is great. I don't do that, though. It's a good practice. It's a good practice. What our next steps are? I find it annoying when people do that. Thank you. So this is um, broken down basically into finishing the design, which we are very, very close to. I have Al committed to January 17th to be done with the design. And then um, the biggest uh, role that you guys will be playing is doing an approval to bid docs and estimate, which I am assuming is the 22nd. Is that your next regularly scheduled meeting? We have one every Monday this month, <laughs> except for next yeah. week, it's okay. Tuesday. Yep. <laughs> I'll take one if you January is Thank you every so Monday. So, um, every year. Part of the process Except for the Martin Luther King, it's Tuesday. Office of School Facilities, Office of School Construction Plan, and review. Part of the process is lots and lots of paperwork, and checklists, and paperwork, and having all your forms signed and dated correctly and whatnot. So, the process is the building committee has to approve the bid documents and the estimate, and you have to sign a form. The Board of Ed has to approve the bid documents and has to say the okay. documents, say yeah. everything, and sign the form and date it. And that meeting is the 23rd. So it's a six-hour meeting, two hours. That's the state meeting, correct? That's the state meeting. So prior to the 23rd, these forms have to be signed. By the uh, I think I'm getting a tooth pulled right. that day. So that's, that's what we're on. And then there's just some site work things going on over at Haynes that we don't want to keep track of. The idea, our strategy on this project is to bid two schools at once, even though there's three school projects. So just because I have a hunch. I'm not I, I doubt they're going to get approval to bid all three schools, but maybe we will. Who knows? Yeah, Usually one gets hung up. Good. So the, hopefully the, the, the idea would be to go out to bid as soon as we can on two schools. We, do appreciate the production we would then give the contractors <laughs> of those two schools a chance to give us combination bids. The third school, whichever one it is, there is no order. I don't even have which ones there would be. That third one just stands on its own. Um, as soon as we get bids in on the first two schools, I'm going to immediately start doing scope review meetings so that when the next bid comes in, maybe we can get some more aggressive pricing, some of the things we get in the first two. Um, and then we have to prepare what's called a guaranteed maximum price. And I'm not sure if the Board of Ed has to approve the guaranteed maximum price, or that's the building committee. I think it's just the building, I think it's the building committee. Yeah. I don't guaranteed guaranteed maximum, maximum price. price. Yeah, I don't I think, think you need. A whole document on that. Oh. Yeah. So we don't need these Thank formats right. for the Board of Ed approval for that. Well, um, yeah, unless. If we accept some of the alternates and they're over 30,000, yeah, that, that would well, be. it's part of the, okay, the GMP, the alternates aren't change orders, they're just incorporated into the contract. But any, uh, any addition to the original scope over 30,000 will not be approved by board then. Mm -hmm. Like generators. We'll have yeah. to figure out. Cause we want, so the idea is to be awarding. We want to be awarding yeah. May 1. May 1 May is my target with awarding the contract. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. So we just need to understand the steps to make sure that we can get there. Yeah. Us. Yeah. Okay. And then what's really critical here is the abatement is not even critical. It's, it's, it's a lot of work to do for each of the schools in the summer. But the critical thing here is, is what we consider long lead, light fixtures, um, casework, just about everything. All the coordination has to be done for the above ceiling work. That's all very critical. What's That's case why work? The cab work. Cabinetry. Okay, cabinetry got, it. All got it. Storage. That take, it takes them eight weeks to do shop drawings and then Just add one piece for this summer with the abatement and law. You know, no students can be you know in the building. We have a lot of programs that run. Park and Rec. Park and Rec. At Haynes, we've already, I've already talked to Dave Putnam. Um, we're looking at the middle school. So Jason and I are going to have to, you know. And that would be that bed. that so camp phenomenon, also correct? Yeah, would exactly. have to be placed exactly. somewhere. That'd be at the yeah. middle school, the high school. Also, um, Kim Davis with uh, the preschool, summer school programs, um, as well as Learn programs that operate out of that in the summer are all going to be have to be shifted so we're working on those as well because no kids can be in those right in those no kids no staff staff can be over yeah staff can just nobody under 18. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. because it's okay for people over the age of 18 yeah. to be around asbestos yes. okay yeah. just i mean if you're over the age of 18 you you're fine you can inhale all that stuff <laughs> Because there's there's an there's an isolation area with negative air. Nobody could be in there other than the actual asbestos mm. You could be out of the negative air area, which really does not contaminate because it's negative pressure in that area. But unfortunately, with young people under 18, you know they may want to jump into that plastic or something, and so that that's the reason for it. So yeah, Jeff could be there, but he's not going to be in the area that's contaminated. Unless he feels like jumping through the plastic yeah. doors. Because, <laughs> you know, he's Jeff. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. I, I just want to thank Laurel. I mean, I, we've been meeting for what, six weeks now, and fabulous yeah. work. I mean, oh, yeah. The oh. amount of work that, that we've done oh, in six she, she, weeks is, and every time she came to my <coughs> building, it, it was like that was the only building she was working on. She knew everything that was in there. So I, I just want to say thank you. This is some serious detail. Al, do you have anything else to share? Budget. Budget, yeah. Do you want to, you want to, you want to do that now? Sure. Okay. You mean money? Yes, <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you need it, I can look down with Jane. Okay. Is the building committee getting copies of these? They have them. Yes. They have them? Okay. Well, we're going to put these up on the website. Too. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. This is the one I just sent out. Yes, <laughs> you're funny. All right, so apparently it's, it's on page one. It kind of just talks about in generalities. I don't have this on. Um, <laughs> oh, no. You don't cost, sit here every day. The way that the costs are broken down is between construction costs and contingencies, and the way that the system is set up is comparing where we are in September So um, the easiest way to describe this is it looks like costs have gone up significantly if you look at one. So the referendum, we had $28 million and we are now at $32 million. And there's an there's an overage, if you will, of $4 million. But some of that is is the, the way it's supposed to go, which is these contingencies and escalation, which is like right on line two, shows a credit of two million four seventy because it's supposed to move up. So not all of that is an increase. It's the four million minus the two million four. And the reason for the increases is on
on the bottom right, there's an explanation. So there's an increase in the CHAP design. And these are all three schools. It's not like it's one school. This is looking at everything in the totality of the three schools. Um, the second item was the front entry canopy, which is what um, Al alluded to earlier about how, again, each of these are the three schools of the total 970. Originally, there was just a small amount of money put in for canopy, and then the design turned into what it turned into. Um, just an increase in the value of the windows, uh, increase of the toilet room areas. In other words, the, the amount of heavy re renovation he didn't necessarily figure originally. Maybe he thought it was light, or maybe he thought more doors were, or walls were going to be able to stay. Um, increase in roof replacement. That could just be, I'm not sure what. That's Flanders. Yeah, but I'm not sure why there was an increase, <coughs> other than just the cost of the material itself. Um, increase in exterior doors. In that case, I know there was more aluminum wood, gla wood glass doors as opposed to hollow metal frame in his mind when he was doing the original estimates. So there's reasons of why the costs have gone up. Um, and you'll see the total of East Lane projects as of design development estimate is $37,449,000. Um, and this is as of our last estimate. We then had to come up with um, some value engineering, which were ways of um, reducing the project scope. So in one case, it was to take the folding partition out of the gym. It was actually both gyms. Um, another item was deleting the exterior, um, cleaning of the exterior foot. Um, Skylight replacement. Yeah, eliminating laser cut logos of corridors. So there were some various items. <coughs> There was a, it's called a bubbler and a sink bowl at some of the, each of the classrooms has a bunch of cabinetry and one was a roof, so we got rid of one of the plumbing fixtures. So there's all sorts of items that we needed to address and take out of the project in order to keep it within the budget. So we have those listed as well. Um, and that's what was reviewed with the building committee. But once we've incorporated those changes, uh, you, were, you were now at 14,000. Yeah. Do we have to replace the skylight? Can we put in like a regular roof? Uh, it would probably ju be just as expensive, just maybe as expensive. even more because of the structure. But before, there's actually there's actually some very good news on this budget. I'll go over that with you towards the end. Uh, it's not tragic. I don't know if you want to jump right into no, that. I, I think the most important line item or number that you have to look at is the middle column at the very bottom, design development <laughs> estimate which is 4584347 mm -hmm. those are the, that's the contingency that you have left over if everything comes in on budget that's M left over left over that 4584347 is undedicated dollars now part of that is construction cost escalation which is 375 most likely you're going to need that construction cost escalation Another item is the uh, GMP contingency. Uh, ONG, as requested by the town, signed a GMP contract with you, which is guaranteed maximum price. They need a little bit of leverage in the dollars to be able to meet that guaranteed price. But if all the bids come in on budget, that's your money. That's not, they don't keep that money. The other bit of good news is ONG just bid a project. Bruce Gelbar, who is the estimator for this and was the estimator for the original project actually came in five percent under so i could tell you i've done a lot of projects and i've i've seen a lot of tight budgets would we like to have a little bit more absolutely we always do but in a nutshell we still have four and a half million dollars of undedicated dollars which means that four and a half million if everything comes in on budget and there's no major surprises not only do we have enough money for the vea items that were taken out of here but we also have enough money for the added items that were added post referendum scope especially if the job comes in 5% under. Yeah. So at this point, I'm a happy camper. I could tell you there was months of discussion on this budget. Uh, Mr. O'Connor and Tim actually traveled to Torrington with me for several meetings. I've had eight hour, con six hour conference call from Florida with ONG. Uh, there was an enormous amount of time spent on these budgets. Uh, meetings between Bruce and I, um, I'm very comfortable with this budget, and I'm, I'm sure ONG is too at this point. I think the, uh, one of the major differences was the canopies. Yeah, the canopy was a because big one. The scope only had 35,000 per school. Yeah, and that, that, that may. So they took that million out. 
right. Exactly. Right on. Exactly. And that may be just, uh, you know, maybe miscommunication. This is pre-referendum between yeah. Bruce Gelbar and I. Um, I had envisioned the canopies as I presented in the renderings. Uh, I don't think Bruce saw that. I think he just assumed the canopy and he only put in. The canopies seem really not have anything to do with health or safety. No. So they really were in the yeah. scheme of the Right. If we have to. If we have to. Yeah. Mm. Even if we don't have to. That's the only architectural statement I have in the project. <laughs> 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 the <laughs> so I, I think what, what's really been accomplished is, and, and the building committee really did some, some uh, really some good work on this, was to, to make sure that we had exactly what was in the original scope, Judge. what 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 was um, needed to be added or alternates, okay, and then the value engineering exercise, which then created additional flexibility if, in fact, the bids come in really ridiculously high or something like that. So you don't know what you really got until you go out to bid, but, but when the bids come back in, we've done, with the help from Laurel and, and Al and the, and the building committee, we've really done the homework that the building committee will be able to take a look at it and say, okay, Here's, here, are rec here are the recommendations, and then you're gonna be able to take a look at it and say, yep, okay, I got it. We're gonna do this, we're not gonna do this, and, and, you're, and we'll have it all figured out. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be a little bit chaotic. I mean, I think, I think we, we put in the, uh, the, the, the necessary you know, time to make sure that we've got as much flexibility as we can. And, and if, if, if the optimist, uh, Mr. Jaklinski, uh, is, is right, then we'll, we'll, it'll actually be uh, a very easy task. It should be very easy to do. I don't know if I'm right, but I'm very rarely wrong. That's right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about the remediation. So all the rem remediation, let's say, of whatever, is gonna be done the first summer. So okay, if we and I should find clarify that. Yes, everything that's inside the building, however, when it gets to the windows, because I think they tested positive, and I'm only gonna do the windows per phase. So that would be all schools in session, but it would be at night. No, I'm just concerned about if there, that might be where the cost overruns, where we may have to make a contingency. No, actually, no. Yeah. Actually, the asbestos, I'm the asbestos actually came in it's under, a little bit under the original allotment that we had in the referendum budget. Correct. By the way, value engineering is also referred to as architecture. It's yeah. architecture. Pardon? Architecture. Architecture. It's where okay. architects get tortured by redrawing stuff over and over and over and over, and over, and over, over, over again. again. Ooh, okay. Okay, so at the, the end of the first summer, we will know most of the remediation will be done. Yes. Okay. Not all of it, but most of it. it just so we know what we're what we hit up against. That. By the way, the window asbestos, it's not that your windows are asbestos, it's the caulking the around the windows. Mm -hmm. And that's a non-friable material. It's not even done under containment, but it does have to be removed and packaged and, and uh, disposed of. Is that what you said? Yeah, Pardon? we would have to do the yeah. removal, removal at night or on weekends, Saturday. They're going to be dated the 12th, uh, that's the date because I need to meet with the building officials, but we're shooting for the 17th as final review said documents. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Mr. O'Connor, they're not going to be any different than what you've seen. Than what you've seen. <laughs> they're not going to be, I, I mean, it, all, the difference between these drawings that you're going to see at your next building committee meeting and the drawings that were the December 15th set is just a little bit more detailed. The scope did not change. The scope is identical to those sets. The specs, I could say, yeah, sure, I could, spend, I could send that out. Those are PDF. Yep, we could get that out to you yeah. before the meeting. So I actually have BVH's specs already. I could get that out to you as early as tomorrow. Yeah. So, so where we're at now is there's this form, and the form is called, what is it called? O40 SCG 042. 042. SCG and construction that form rules. has to be signed by a whole bunch of, whole bunch of folks. SCOG 402? 
SCG, yeah. School Construction Grants 042. Okay. And, and that basically is a statement that Jeff and myself would have to sign it, uh, Rocky has to sign it, and it's a statement that you are approving the project to go to bid. As, as, de, as it as, is as as designed and presented, and also the budget. You're signing off on the final plans and specs and the budget, and the budget is pretty much, right. as you see it, there may be some small little tweaking uh, because Bruce Gelbar will get a little bit more detail. Just today he received details for some of the site work. Um, so you're signing off on the final plans and specifications. Now, even though you're signing off on the final plans and specifications, we're not going out to bid with this. Right. Because I can tell you after our meeting at the state, there will be some things that will change. So it's actually technically not a bid set, even though you're signing off on a bid set, right. because there will be some modifications after the state meeting. Always happens. Yeah, yeah. So timing-wise, now, this is kind of the, the, funny, the funny part, is that the building committee is going to meet on the 18th, and as you just heard, Al's getting, they're getting all the stuff ready for, for that meeting, and that's when the building committee will do the final review and then say, okay, all right? Um, we have a meeting scheduled for the 22nd, 22nd. 22nd, okay? Which then, we could take action, have knowing the direct outcome from the, the town building committee. But the worry I have is that we're gonna have, and I don't think it's gonna happen, but the worry I have is, is we have a snow day, mm -hmm. or we have weather problems, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we would have to cancel the January 23rd meeting with the state because we don't have, we don't have everything signed, signed off on. That's, that's sure. tragic. What? Yes. Now, that, yeah, yeah, so, no, no, that's why, that's why, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the <laughs> take away yeah. here. It could be, <laughs> okay. could be two leading up to it. So, <laughs> so what I think would, well, is just, night. pardon? Go up and spend the night before. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. It has to do with 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 having Let's all the stuff together, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 We can't oh, get together. And and so, and so we night. could, and I we've talked with Al about this, and, and there's no 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 problems whatsoever. If there was a motion by the board to authorize the superintendent and the board chair to sign off on the 042 um, document, contingent on the town building committee, committee approval. Yep. Um, if we took that action tonight, then we don't have to worry about snow days and all of that, okay? So, um, and you're not really committing no. to anything, it's just, it, you know, and, and if there's something happened that was a, you know, was a major shift, change or something, we'd, we'd be all, I mean, it's just, well, it's not gonna happen, but we So what, if we wanna make that motion, what's mm -hmm. the wording that we need to use? So. Or can we Jamie, you got it? No, I, my, my only thing is, is my only problem with that is, is it's not on our agenda yeah. and no one knows about it. Yeah. But it's not special. It's not special. No, 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 but what I'm saying is, is that no one knew we were going to take a motion on doing this form. That's the, that's my only quip. Don't we have a meeting on Tuesday? We do have a meeting on Tuesday. Could that be something? There's one scheduled for the 16th. There was um, one scheduled for the 16th. Maybe we want to talk oh. about, you know, after budget discussions, do we, do we, oh, want do we hold My only quip is, is it's not on our agenda as having something that we're going to vote on tonight for the school the for committee. Have a, have a, if you can't vote on something that's not on the agenda, it's not a special meeting. That's right. Mm -hmm. This is a regular I, But I just yeah, am I thinking know. public in my head and. So if we if we all if we had <laughs> una if we were unanimous that we would we would we would want to entertain a motion on this, okay? That would that would modify that could modif that would yeah, modify you, that the could modify the agenda. If we were unanimous on it. If we're not, then then we would have to then we would have to wait um, for the next the next meeting. Well, couldn't we just put it off to the sixteenth? But, but we may not meet. Well, you may not need the meeting on the 16th. The meeting on the 16th. So that's it. So if, you wanna, if we all want to meet on the 16th, that's that's fine. Fine with me. I wouldn't want to mess with it. <laughs> what would the exact motion be? Just call uh, it would be uh, to, author to authorize the superintendent, the superintendent Tim and, and Rocky to sign the SCG. No, just, just, just Rocky. Rocky. No, no, oh, these two, because we Tim can't say him. These two down. to sign the SCG 042 to go ahead. Contingent on or pending, pending state building, state approval. Approval. Yeah, approval. Yeah, approval. building committee yeah. approval. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it can't happen unless the, the town building committee. We have to make a motion to add it to the agenda first. Yes. <coughs> yes. Um, yeah, we have to. Well, we yeah, we have to. I, I propose we modify the agenda, and then we have to have unanimous. So we have to be right. unanimous on okay. that. So, 
All right, I'll, I'll make I'll make okay, a motion to uh, modify uh, the agenda uh, and add so the has to be two approval thirds. of. No, it has to be everybody. Not uh, an amendment. It has to be two thirds. Seventy-five percent majority. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll take your. I'll take. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's true. To add to the agenda the authorization of the superintendent and the board chair to sign the SEG 042. 042. I second it. There's a second? Second? Okay. To add it to the agenda? Yes. Is that what your motion was? Yes. To, yeah, for the board to take action. Okay. And that was with Jim. Uh, any other discussion on this? Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. One abstention. Okay, so that passes. Uh, now, would anybody like to make a motion? I need to read it. Before. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. He's scrapped. So we, got it? we can we can craft it out. So um, the motion would be for uh, the motion to authorize, would authorize board uh, board the board uh, chair as well as the superintendent. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Authorize the superintendent and the board chair. To sign off on the SCG 042. 042 contingent on town building committee approval. Yep, yep. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. We got it. Okay. Anybody like to make that motion? So moved. Barb moves it. I'll second it. Jill seconds it. Any further discussion? Everybody clear on it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? One abstention. Okay, so that passes. Um, and thank you very much. Any, any, any? I'm available for your meeting on the 22nd. If something happens that yeah. we see differs, I'll be more than happy to be here. If nothing changes, if the building committee approves it on, a, on the 18th, I'm not gonna show up on the 22nd. Yeah. I won't be here. Be I will be there right. in yeah. person. Yeah. Any other questions for Al, Laurel, on this? Very much a lot of effort. I agree. Thank you. Nice job. Yeah. And I also also commend our architect for bending and flowing with our town building committee and I can I see the, the, the amount of minutia and detail <laughs> that has been resolved and dealt with is amazing. The amount of, of detail that's coming is absolutely mind boggling <laughs> staggering. I, 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 the, watching the bidding process and, and it's going to be amazing uh, to, because it's, uh, there's just so much. I have three sheets per school. The final documents is about 150 sheets. It's about that that for each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. huge. It's huge. Uh, and the only reason I'm complying is I think Laurel is the next Navy SEAL. <laughs> <laughs> I would go with that. I would definitely go with that. So I'm just was going. Army Corps. Army Corps? Okay. <laughs> I thought it was Navy SEAL. Were you military? Okay. No, no, she, no, she's, na she's Navy SEAL. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your communication. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, you. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Drive safe. Careful. Yeah, getting home, please. Okay. Jill just wants Oh, Jill, go ahead. Yeah. Just, I just want to say this because as I think about, I mean, it seems like we've well orchestrated, or Laurel has well orchestrated movies and students around. I, I feel my opinion is that we need to leave it open that your child may move more than once. Because if we say once and we can't meet it, I just think anything can happen once you start a construction project. And I think we need to ensure, the par let the parents know that their child could meet more than once. When you say move, do you mean within the building? In school. No, who knows? Well, we, they've already said they're not moving out of the school. I, you know what, stuff happens. I guess is I'm just concerned about upsetting the parents. And I'd rather this go as smooth as possible and leave any option open with where the child will go or won't go. We're still working on our redistricting. If you all disagree with me, that's fine. But I wanted to put that out there. I think we need, we don't know how this will flow. So 
Yeah, and we, we, that's where we want to keep the two separate too. Redistricting will follow. I agree. Um, and they will move in house, uh, and especially between Flanders and Central Office, there there will be movements every four months or so um, between the Christmas break, the April break. Yeah. They're going to be shuffling around house, but the goal was not to disrupt and have to send you know kids to off-site off right. at different spots. <laughs> but leave that door open. Something can yeah. happen. I, but whatever y'all want to do. Well, as long as the, yeah, I mean, as long as the phasing plans, which I think are in are in good shape, we're still finalizing the, the Flanders, but uh, they, they've spent countless hours figuring oh, it no, out. So great. I think I we're in good, we're in good, 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 especially at Haynes, plenty of room. Oh yeah, um, right there, right there. Right? Especially if it's yeah. 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 so yeah. right. I mean, I, no, I think I think it's um, you know when we first started talking about this, oh, we oh, talked. Guys. Can can I call to order, yeah, please? Uh, yeah. Barbara has the floor. Okay. okay. I, you know, when we first started talking about this, we were all really concerned that we would have to move kids from building to building during construction. And mm -hmm. I think that the fact that the phasing plan doesn't make us have to do that is amazing. Mm. And as parents, honestly, I don't think parents care if their kid has to change classrooms during the time. All they care about is that they don't have to leave the building, except central office, which isn't that big a deal, or they don't have to go into a temporary, temporary classroom. So I don't even think that's all they need to know, in my opinion, because I don't know how you did it when you did it in Montville, but I, when I was involved in a project where all we did is move the kids from one section of the building to the other, I don't even think we told the parents that the no, kids it were moving. It, it was. It worked it, out. They didn't. They don't really. They don't really need to know. They don't care what classroom their kid being is in. Being in the building and, and all the you know. They're in that place. community. They're not being yeah. removed from it. Right. That's Great. all they need to know. Yeah. They're not leaving the building. That's, right. that's what they need okay. to know. No, I, I think I'm I, I, happy I, I do agree though with, with, with Jill's point. This is that. There's still, there's still, a, there's always going to be a level of uncertainty until the project's completed. So, and right. it, so I think you know you can't make absolute promises. No, I don't think we promise, but we just say this is the phasing, yeah. and this is yep. what we're hoping will happen. Good. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you for listening, y'all. All right. I'm hanging around just in case. Okay. No, I was it. All set to move on. We're dealing with yeah. parents. Thanks, so Thanks, Al. Thank we lost the secretary. Careful it. driving, Al. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Until the world's well, yeah. Okay, so um, we'll move on then to uh, the presentation of the superintendent's proposed 2018-19 uh, budget. Okay, excellent. Okay. Um, I think we can probably move this, move through this um, fairly quick. Just a, a couple pieces too, and I, I just want to quickly kind of walk through this binder, but first, let me just shout out thanks um, to everybody involved, our administrators, our teaching staff. Um, you know, uh, Lynn, Central Office, uh, everybody that was involved in this, this process from the ground up. Um, I think it went extremely smooth this year, so we're happy with, with how that worked out. Thanks to all of you for the budget workshops, too. I have been very happy with how that's flowed, with having yeah. two budget workshops prior to, because what we're presenting tonight, there's no surprises. You know exactly what's going to be in front of you um, outside of a little shift in the, you know, the final proposed uh, um, increase. So um, what is a little different, though, is this binder. Um, so just if, if we could, let me just walk through some of these tabs um, because there's a couple new things added in here too. Um, obviously the first and second, um, or first page in tabs, you know, you don't, uh, the proposed, uh, or the um, PowerPoint we'll go over in just a second. But start with the budget uh, summary. You have a different look to the formatting now. It kind of ties in with what we've been sharing with the Board of Fine, uh, the FFO committee um, mm -hmm. and how things are laid out. So you have the summary by object code um, right there with the full, uh, right down to uh, you like know, what our final number lot. is. Yep. Um, and then uh, we also put in here estimated general fund revenue projections. You've seen this, this has been in here in the past as well. Uh, budget summary by location, um, just a breakdown of you know each of our schools, admin and district wide, um, and then Page two is the district-wide elementary breakdown. You've seen those two. But now we get a little bit different again with the shift of, of how we're portraying each of the schools. This is a, a further breakdown. So you see a little bit more detail than you've seen in the past um, with those. Uh, so each of the schools, administration, um, and district-wide 
uh, are all under that tab. Um, this is a new tab, this next one, the budget comparison. Uh, we had heard um, previously that you know you might be um, you know interested in kind of seeing a comparison of the uh, the schools. We put um, mm -hmm. the three elementary schools together, and once you could see them across, and then the middle school and high school um, is also in there, so you can see a cross reference you know with those. So you have a different <laughs> format of how you look at that. Um, our new initiatives. Next tab, uh, we wanted to give you current status of where we were when we talk about our new initiatives, which is solely dedicated to school psychologists and social worker component. We'll talk about those in the PowerPoint, but we wanted you to see what we currently have present okay. and then what our request is and, and the dollar break breakdown. Um, next is the full <laughs> detail, uh, budget detail, yeah, yeah, yeah. as you always receive. Um, the proposed budget, new, is capital improvement information. Ooh. We wanted to get there this, yeah, that's been like a little that. bit of a like issue that. in the past. We don't normally get that so till May at the town meeting. Exactly. <laughs> so why no, <laughs> so like, let's give it to you now. So it's it's in yeah, here, so you can see we have talked, remember we had that CIP <laughs> ad hoc committee, so we <laughs> talked about this, this is a 10 year plan. You just want to kind of direct your attention to 1819. Um, Mariana has done a great job, you know, breaking that out. Um, so you can kind of see where we're at dollar wise and, and what we're requesting. Nice. Uh, so we can talk about that, you know, at any point. I also under that tab huh? is the new form. I think I mentioned in, a, in an update, um, the capital project request <gasps> form. This is what will get sent down to the Board of Finance or downtown from now on. Digitized so system? It sure will be digitized. Oh, so good. we can track <laughs> now every one of our requests. Uh, and again, <laughs> many thanks to Mariana, we copied a form that she had used previously. We had made some adjustments, so we will be tracking all of our requests oh, now. So we don't miss something um, as you know, we did with those notification systems. And then the glossary yeah, you've seen before uh, as well. <laughs> so um, I'm going to turn to the PowerPoint. And We'll be pretty brief with these slides. A lot, again, a lot of this information you've already heard. Some of these items. is actually a lot less information. It feels like so much more comprehensive in my mind because they used to do this section right here. Because I have it. It used to be like the big one. Oh, that's not that. That's the easy button. Thanks, Grant. Okay. We'll, uh, let's go through these uh, slides. We've got a new format, new layout for you. I hope you kind of like it a little different. Um, first, our presentation purpose. Uh, we're staying focused on a clear communication um, and gaining support commitment for uh, for this budget, um, as we have done uh, previously. Um, Zero-based budgeting practices, as well as transparency um, and fiscal responsibility, uh, are, are adamant um, and remain our focus. New to us uh, is the long-range plan, um, and not new to us is the district mission statement, but ties in with our new long-range plan. So our new long-range plan is what we have encompassed, as we should be doing this budget uh, around and, and those goals. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And that's our, our next slide, uh, slide three. Go ahead, Green. No, thanks. Um, our mission statement as well as those, those three goals. Uh, and we're gonna refer back to those when we start talking about our uh, request for um, 
psychology increase as well, psychologists increase as well as uh, our social worker uh, increases. So next slide, here it is. Uh, this is where we are at um, for a uh, proposed um, requested budget, 2018-19, uh, 47 million, uh, 776,943 uh, percent increase over the previous year uh, is 2.59 uh, percent. I want to preface, um, we have not put in any of the ECS reductions, increases, where we're going to be at next year. We don't, we don't know. Um, we don't have final information yet. We have um, some information that come from the state regarding what we might be losing, but we are not going to embed that in this and then have something change as it continues to, to do. So we still could see uh, additional money released this year with our current holdback that had occurred. So we don't know. So that, that is not embedded. This is where we're, we're at. Can I interrupt real quick? Yeah, Jim, Is there any proposed pension obligations in here yet either? No. Okay. No, no. A um, little bit of budget history. Um, just want to go back. Um, at this point during, you know, my, my tenure uh, here in East Lyme, the tenure of, you know, some of our, uh, our newer staff, um, I think we've really, this, this slide with the, the superintendent's budgets really speaks to the, we've tried to, to really streamline our budget um, and, and really have a, a real hard understanding of where all of our dollars are um, and reallocate, repurpose, and do a lot of work around those areas. And I think you've seen the trend of we've been able to get to a finite uh, understanding of you know, where, uh, where we are fiscally. Uh, and that has allowed us to get down to um, and at a 2.59 without impacting uh, our, our programming and, and really impacting our staff. So uh, wanted to share that uh, information with you. Hopefully uh, you know, you'll approve it um, and adopt it and then we'll see where we go from there. Key budget drivers, always part of the, uh, the story. A um, little bit of a different slide for you. Uh, our fixed expenses are huge. Um, you can see 96.66% you know, um, are, are fixed. Salaries and benefits we know are really 80, almost 80% 80 of any of the budgets. Um, we have no control over, over those other than you know, cutting uh, staff. We have benefited from some uh, better insurance claims. So our insurance costs have gone down. That has helped out immensely. Um, that's still subject to waiver a little bit, but as of right now, um, you know, it's, it's still a big part of our budget. Other fixed, you know, our operating expenses, utilities, liability insurance, leases, our contracted services, our transportation. I'm going to talk a little bit about transportation, but our, our bus, our, our, our full bus contract has got one more year, 2019, that's our next year, our last year of the five-year deal. So we're definitely going to want to be looking at, um, when we go out to bid, um, there, there could potentially be some savings uh, there. So one more year with that, uh, that bus contract. So we have the f a lot of flexibility in equipment, supplies, techs, and software, which um, is a minute piece of, of that pie. A big part of our budget story now, it has been in the past, but it needs to continue to grow is between the next two slides, what we're doing for cost saving and uh, avoidance, uh, cost avoidance measures. Um, I think the zero-based budgeting component, building from the ground up uh, at the school level first, has really helped, um, and the administrators uh, have, have done a great job with that. Our food service program change, saved ourselves $30,000 um, this year. We're no longer putting dollars in the operating budget to offset the cost of our food service program. So that was a big, uh, big savings. The high deductible health plan has been in you know, really year three now. Yep. Teachers have started at uh, first our certified staff. Um, now we have everybody rolled over you know, under the high deductible health plan as we march into next year. Uh, that uh, is, is helped out in the big savings as well. Um, Amy's going to talk about you know, some software and curriculum contract consolidation that she started last year. Uh, Mariana uh, has looked at um, oil and uh, propane. Um, and fuel and working with the town uh, on some savings there and our move from propane and oil over to natural gas as we know central office is now on natural gas Flanders will come soon uh, and the pool is in process um, professional development in-house professional development rather than sending school sending individuals to, uh, to teachers out for professional development which is, is costly um, that district town collaboration uh, as well as Medicaid uh, reimbursement um, Kim has done a good job at identifying, uh, reaching out to parents uh, to gain more dollars in Medicaid reimbursement, which is which is big. So, on the district town collaboration side, um, we're in the midst of talking about like snow plowing, for instance, for next year and sharing that service. Uh, right now, we pay an outside contractor uh, about nineteen thousand dollars on average, you know, per year 
uh, for snow plowing. And the town could do that for free for us, right. and maybe we could help and plow uh, you know, for them. Yeah. So future areas under discussion. I'd almost like to stamp regional across this slide. That, yep. yeah. Because 99% of these are where we need to be looking at you know, in a regional capacity. Um, now I won't go over all of them, but you, you've seen them uh, before. And we've already started discussions. You know, I've had two districts inquire about you know, our food service director, for instance, and mm -hmm. possibly sharing where you know, they'd have, we'd actually uh, we'd have, to, we'd have to hire you know, some support for him, but he would oversee a regional approach potentially. So that could bring us dollars because he's our, our, our person. <laughs> so um, does he want to do that? Uh, we've had a little, uh, <laughs> I heard you. We've had some conversations with him. And, and you know, I, Chris, I mean, Chris is open like to, it, he's open to, to different things, but it's got to be set up the right way. Yeah, he's he's got to be supported. Uh, we don't want to overload. So, but we, I think, yeah, we're, we've got to look at, at all, uh, all areas. And can we make a profit? Uh, absolutely. Well, that's, they, they pay us. So, uh, okay. you know, it'd be dollars coming in. Um, you know, the uh, health insurance consortium, we're looking at a regional approach, you know, to health insurance. Uh, you know, the transportation component, you know, Kim uh, working on sharing uh, of vans and, and rides. We're in the midst of working on that. Uh, actually, in conversations with, with Waterford. Um, I'll throw our coastal connections as well. We've talked about revenue there. Um, I just had a conversation with the superintendent telling her about our program. Um, come look at it. So who wants to come check it out? Potentially, maybe even combining forces uh, in some capacity. So regional stamp, picture of a stamp of regional across that slide, and that's gonna, you're gonna continue to see that, and we've got uh, work to continue to do in that, uh, that venue. Amy's gonna talk about the next slide. Um, my focus for the 1819 budget was really focused on reallocation of grant funds. So with the Every Student Succeed Act, it created some flexibility for us in regards to our Title I and Title II funds. So we wanted to look at how we're using those a little bit differently. The way in which we're looking to support it is I always think of a triangle in my head when I think about what is it that I want to try and accomplish across the district. So for our students, my focus is on district-wide instructional software negotiations, so negotiating with software that lives in more than one building, as well as instructional supplies that align to our curriculum revision cycle. So the curriculum revision cycle for me is the ultimate decision maker. It determines who receives professional learning funds, who receives instructional supplies. It all aligns to the phases in which they're in in the curriculum revision cycle. So hopefully what we notice over time is that be comes a cost savings for us because we have targeted content areas that we're focusing on where, uh, that receive additional PD funds while others are re receiving less PD funds because of the time in which they're at in regards to the cycle. The other for teachers is in regards to professional learning as well as creating district-wide dues and fees. So right now instead of having, you know, because an individual teacher wants to be a member of A, B, and C organization, we grant them access to that. Instead looking at it as district-wide, no, if you are an ELA, teacher here at East Lyme, we support this district membership, period. If you are a math teacher, it creates a nice entry too with our new beginning staff um, coming in a district saying, congratulations, as a member of our world language department, you become a member of such and such uh, here in East Lyme. So it creates a little bit nicer tone, but it also hopefully for us will create sort of a, um, it will decrease in regards to the dues and fees that we currently pay. Um, the other thing in regards to teachers as well is the hiring of instructional consultants across the district. So working in more than one building so we have more consistent approach. So rather than sending two teachers from one building to a workshop to hear from this person, send two teachers from another building to hear from this person, instead I'm saying, nope, we're gonna actually vet consultants that we wanna have working with us in more than one building, renegotiate their contract, have them come to us, and instead of getting four people to work with, I'm gonna get about 24 people that can benefit from that person and have some more consistency. So we're really focused on that. And then the third piece is around content. So our curriculum development cycle aligning to the revision process, which again will determine who receives additional support in the summer for curriculum development. All in all though, really for me as I gain more in my budget <laughs> uh, year to year, um, for me it's really important that we continue to look at grant funding and those additional opportunities that we have obviously to offset the operating budget out of my office. And that's something you will see in the um, in the budget itself. You know, an increase in you know district-wide Amy's line items and a decrease at the you know at the school level. Kim. So um, this is just a little excerpt from the special education um, side of the student services office. So um, it's 
surprising, but when we <laughs> compare the numbers, we have the same right now, uh, 425 students <laughs> last year, and the same right now this year. You know, that's, that number changes, <laughs> but um, yeah, we're not drastically up or down, so that's a good thing. So that's where we are. Um, what I'm focusing on is maintaining um, our current staffing levels um, so that we can support our more complex students. Um, we have several coming out of preschool um, for 18, 19, who will need, so that'll require us to shift around people, but we, it won't require us to hire any new people. So maintaining our staffing numbers, um, both from a certified and a non-certified point of view. Um, and then continuing to support PD, which Jeff alluded to, this year we're doing exactly that. We brought in a literacy consultant, and all of our special education teachers, high school through elementary, are receiving four sessions, uh, full day sessions on structured literacy this year instead of sending a person here, a person there. So we're realizing that. And then um, based on recommendations from the audit, one of the um, support aspects I'll be looking at through PD is improving um, our ability to write and um, meaningful IEPs with measurable goals and objectives. So, and then things to continue to explore. Um, again, based on the recommendation of the CREC audit, looking at our staff and studying how they're using their time versus uh, on paperwork versus meetings versus um, student contact hours and where we have any leverage there. And then also possibly exploring, uh, well, definitely exploring the possibility of having tuition paying students in the AIM program, which is our transition program for 18 to 21 year old students. Yep. So um, sometimes, you know, districts don't necessarily have a match for a student and um, you know, hopefully we do. We have um, a, a great facilitator and um, wonderful job coaches there, so I, we can offer some in-town experiences and maybe receive some tuition dollars there. So, um, so that's. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Um, just a, a reminder: this information is broken down in your binder. So if you want to, you can you know refer to it in relation to our, our staffing initiatives. But we just wanted to point out what our requests are and how we're uh, repurposing and offsetting some dollars you know, to afford uh, much of this. <coughs> so the social workers uh, at the um, elementary, middle school, and high school level, uh, we're looking for you know, an increase of 2.7, as we discussed it in our budget workshop. Uh, the dollar, proposed dollar amount uh, is there for that increase. Uh, the 0.5 school psychologists at the elementary level which would cover uh, across um, to allow each of the schools and to have uh, more support at the school psychology level. Total, 208,000. Staffing cost reduction, uh, I had mentioned at the second budget workshop, uh, we have room with declining enrollment you know, at, at the high school um, at this point uh, to reduce a teacher. Mr. Susi is not sure and we're not sure where that might be and what most likely will happen, it would be a 0.2 here, a 0.3 there, 0.1 here in order to come up with that because you really in the spring, he needs to look across uh, all of those domains. But with the decreased enrollment, we, we feel uh, we can do that. Uh, and the other is at the elementary level at uh, Lily B. Haynes. Um, when you look at the uh, enrollment numbers and the shifts of class sections coming up to the next grade level, um, we are left without changing the class sizes at Haynes with, with one, uh, the ability to have one less, one less teacher there. Flanders, there's some shifting, but um, grade two and grade three offset each other, and grade three and grade four offset each other. Mm -hmm. So um, it works out. And we can get you some, some specifics and detailed information if you want as to, you know, to, to show those, those numbers, those class size numbers. I would numbers. like that, yeah, just yeah, to make sure. <laughs> Absolutely, yep, yeah, and I, I have it Haynes too. I can show you afterwards. So that's our, um, our only request, you, you know, we talked about that at the, the budget workshop. This aligns directly with our, you know, our long range plan. Um, this is why this is, uh, is in place. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that, uh, that next, uh, for some background data. Uh, yeah, sure, come on up, Mrs. Davis. So um, combining the um, request for additional uh, social work and school psychologist support is aligns directly with the long range plan, um, goal three, which is student centered learning. Um, and then of course we pair that down to our district um, improvement plan for this um, current school year and moving forward, as we know, it'll take us a couple of years to get to that progressing um, section on the uh, long range plan. But measurable uh, outcome for students is that we wanna identify 
uh, social and emotional needs for our students and determine the supports needed to develop social and emotional well-being of all children. So that's what we're working on just this school year and it'll take us into next school year as well. And we feel um, strongly that adding the social workers and um, point five school psychologists would help us do that. The um, graphic on the left there kind of shows you that the um, cohesive and strong development of students' coping skills is really at the center of what we're doing and why we're focusing on this goal. And then what they need in order to encapsulate that is good curriculum instruction. Some of them will need counseling as an additional layer to that, and then some of them will then eventually need community support um, in addition to that as well. So it takes all of those things, we believe, to make, um, a, you know, to give students what they need to become competent with their social and emotional development. And having social workers and school psychologists in the building can help us accomplish um, that curriculum and instruction piece and that counseling piece um, where we really feel like we don't have enough support at the moment, so. Oh, yeah. I'm on the next slide, that's right, yep, <laughs> sorry. Some additional data. Yeah, so in terms of looking at the data, um, I've been doing some reading, and I'm just gonna take you back briefly to 2008, um, when we had a recession, obviously, in this country, and um, research, researchers have just re released a study in the Journal of American Medical Association about the rise of um, self-injury in girls aged 10 to 14 since the recession, and um, it's striking in terms of ER visits. So they only studied one specific time that um, medical professionals have content contact with a student, but they studied it from 2008 until 2015 and just published their results in November. So then historically we traveled to 2014, which we know for especially Connecticut and the nation was um, an emotional time with the Sandy Hook shooting and the legislature then released um, guidance to school districts about having access to mental health professionals for children and the Office of the Child Advocate released a report that described um, who Adam Lanza was um, from preschool to the time of the shooting and how the, there were there's no blame certainly in that report but just a look back at what can we do as school communities to support children and perhaps prevent someone from being in a similar situation um, where he found himself um, that year. So then in, four, in the 15-16 school year, um, the high school started taking data on mental health um, and safety interventions here at the high school. And you can see for the 15-16 year, they had 41 recorded instances. That doesn't mean 41 students, it means 41 instances. So it could be the same student more than once, but it still takes the same amount of staff time when you're dealing with those things. In 16-17, it went down a little bit to 33. Currently, we're at 29 <coughs> just to date. So I met with Chris Olson um, last week. So this is a very real number. Um, at the middle school, we just started tracking um, the mental health and safety interventions last school year. You can see that we were at 26 total for the year and already to date we're at 27. Um, at the elementary, we have not been tracking that data. Um, what I like to think is that at the elementary, we're still being preventative. And so, um, you know, we're really working hard on that classroom instruction that creates social emotional well being for kids and gives them strategies to handle when things aren't going their way, to bounce back, to persevere. Um, and so that's where the good curriculum and instruction is key. And our school psychologists currently do a lot of that. So adding that 0.5 school psychologist will. Um, support our ability to provide more of that at the elementary level, where it seems a little bit as the middle and the high school is somewhat more reactive with a little bit of the, that counseling piece and the social work piece, although it's not entirely absent at the elementary level either, but um, just kind of yeah. gives you a, maybe a little bit of frame of reference for how those two things operate, so. Um, and then just in terms of research supporting at the elementary level, we've been using a lot of resources from the Collaborative for Academic and Social Learning, which we call, affectionately call CASEL, C-A-S-L, and they're um, a huge information source for social and emotional learning resources. And um, Tim, in fact, we've, there are, there's further information that, sh that really aligns with the PowerPoint you gave me from oh, yeah. uh, Cape Cass right. about the universal screening right. for social skills and um, students' emotional well-being, so. Yeah, We're using good. a lot of information from there. And there's a very good study um, on how social emotional learning um, specific instruction lessons designed to improve coping skills works. It makes a difference for kids. So it's a valuable um, piece of instruction for us to invest in. So, Could so. I have a copy of the article about the young women? Sure. 
Yes, I, I mean, absolutely. So I don't have the whole article because we don't subscribe to the Journal of American Medical Association, but I was linked to it through um, a Channel 8 piece, and I have the summary that, that's on their website. And so I'd be happy have, to share that with you. I yeah. just li I'd like absolutely. to see that and do a little bit more research. Yeah. yeah. I do have Caswell Safety as, a couple of, as one of my okay, favorites, yeah. but I haven't gotten to it yet. Okay. I'm sorry. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks I may have access uh -huh. to the article because I think Pfizer does get the JAMA. So oh, yeah. Okay. For sure. Yeah. So. Okay. If you let me know, I might yeah, be able to I get a Yeah, I can send you. It's like November 21st, okay. I think, is the issue, but I can send that. It seems like women, did, not women, young women to increase that. With, uh, so with that 0.5 requested increase for the school psychologist component, too, at the elementary level, um, not only does it support kids, but it also frees up our other psychologists to uh, be testing. Um, who are, or are testing uh, more time with kids, so it, fr it frees them up a little bit and uh, we lessen that, that amount of testing overall. Testing. This next slide, uh, so it's not oh, testing. back up one. Can we come up with another word for testing? Because it sounds like we're like testing them for like grades, but it's not. It's not, no, it's not testing for grades. <laughs> the, the oh, no. but do you know what I'm saying? Like I hear testing <laughs> and it's like it's a grade. It's not a grade, it's. Yeah. Maybe um, a question survey that right. a teacher fills out you know, on their observations. Right, I know, but when we say testing, when we go, when we do like the town budget thing, when we say testing, they're gonna be like, well, why yeah. is a social worker testing? And it's not. We call it like a multifaceted evaluation. The evaluation, I like that better. Evaluation. Just because, it, because when we do say that, they're gonna say, they're gonna ask us, right. well, why are they testing? Are they te yeah, they're right. not testing, right. they're doing. Yeah, it's, it's really a multi-part sure. or multifaceted <laughs> evaluation. <laughs> um, An eval. This slide here, I really want to draw your attention to the social worker time. Yeah, I mean, if you, it's terrible. crazy. You just you break out the student to professional ratio. Uh, I mean, we more than double um, other districts that are in our DERG, very similar to our statute, same town. You know, is this without our new initiative, or is this with our this new initiative? Without. Without. Okay. This is without. Okay. I'm just without. so I know. Yes. Yep. Yes. This is without the requested 2.7 FTE. Um, so that dropped significantly with with putting that uh, putting that in. I just want to make sure. Staggering. I um, we just wanted to share that yeah, with terrible. you. Very um, just some, some final thoughts. Uh, we, we feel strongly we've put together you know, a, a fiscally responsible budget, mm -hmm. um, have committed a, a, commit a responsible um, requested percent increase. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, again, thank you for your support and the time during the budget workshops. Um, and we'll see where this, uh, where this takes us with uh, both you and the town, next steps. Um, your budget review. Uh, you have the binders, you have all the information. We do have, that's where the, the meeting on the 16th comes into play, or the 22nd. If you would like, and we'll leave it up to you, um, we just wanna have the meeting on the 22nd, and give you more time for, for review, uh, if you're comfortable um, in doing so. Uh, we could skip the meeting on the 16th. Um, we have on the 29th, the um, public hearing. So there is some, some time in there, but I'll leave it up to you, you know, for, for some discussion, and then we'll have time for questions and, and information. A as well, any questions you have, please email them to us ahead of time so we can respond back to you and answer anything uh, specific. And just a thank you to Mariana for her work, phenomenal job this year in streamlining this, this budget even more. So can thank I you, Mariana. just make a suggestion for when we do our public hearing that we get, try to s maybe see if we can get some numbers from Hannah about how many people she sees and how much of a waiting list she has. For the dr drug alcohol counseling component? Of the just so that they know that this is what we're doing, this is how logged we are, how much this would help us with that backlog. Yeah, we could get some more, more data. Just so that the town is aware, this is what we are currently doing, this is how busy this person currently is, this is what she, we could be doing if we had the more staff and. Well, and it's even more important not having this and not having a use service, a full use services bureau for our town. Right. Just. I don't know if we're gonna get a full I, use services no, I, bureau, I, but. I agree, yeah, I don't. I, don't, I mean, but, but so if we could let the community know that this is, this is an issue and we're taking, we've already taken these steps We'd like to be able to take these steps. It not only helps our students, it helps our town, our community, so that they can get behind us. Because I know at the town level, they haven't been behind it in the town budget. I'd like to get them behind it in our budget and their budget, but at least our budget. We are gonna try and when we get down to the Board of Finance to present, these slides are gonna be important. We're really trying to push. This is a big part of our story, our budget story that we're gonna be pushing. So, Eric? So, um, first, Fantastic, thank you. I mean, you guys, 
Jeff, you and your whole team, as well as everybody, just great job. The budget workshops were great, and coming in at, at you know, it seems like a very reasonable request. Um, not knowing what's going on with Connecticut or anything else, this is, I mean, this is just seems what's right for our district. So fantastic. My question is really just on the the new staffing initiatives, whatever the, the um, social work and school psychologists. I don't, I don't, I don't know if these are the slides we're going to use to present to the board of finance, yeah, but maybe not. Because yeah. I think we need to sell it more. Mm -hmm. Like I think the board in the budget workshops. I think we're all really behind it. Um, I don't want to speak for everybody, but the general feeling is we need this. This is our responsibility. We want to do it. Um, and you found a way to do it where we can find some savings, and it's actually only small incremental cost to do this. But when I look at these slides, um, they don't. They don't you know, sell it. it. It doesn't, because it's like I don't know. I mean, so I'll, not to pick on this up, but. You know, so in the high school that there were, you know, 41 interventions in 15, 16, 33 in 16, 17, 29 to date, which sounds pretty high yeah. relative. But what I don't know is 41 doesn't sound, I, you know, 41, how many people do we need for that? I, don't, I just don't have that context to say, oh, well, 41, you know, is that just like a couple hours? You know, and that, I, I don't know what happens. So I like, you describe some um, of the events. Yeah, and, yeah, and like a safe this example. takes over days, or or like, yeah. you know, what what's the series of things that just exactly. show the oh, that it you know forty one says oh well if we have a half a person can handle forty one in a school year it's one hundred eighty days so most days nothing's happening so what are they doing you know that, that right so yeah. so yeah. just to cap that because I know it's more I don't know how what is more but it, so and then. Um, you know, numbers people, when we go to the district comparison, social worker, right, off the chart, we should show what it becomes after just to show where we end up. It would be nice to have a mean, like for our dirt, dirt to say on average for each of those. But the school psychologist, I don't remember us being, when we looked at it, I mean, this makes it look like we're actually Okay. The, average, the better, the average. like, but to be honest, if you look just at this list, there's only two that are. Yeah, the list that you did during the budget looked more well, it, positive. It broke it out more of what <laughs> each uh, each level basically, or what you know, primary, secondary, you know, schools had. So we could be obviously be more robust, you know, with that and share. It just, I, I don't want to make up data, but. I mean, what I when I remember looking and, and looking at the charts, I mean, the social worker is clearly off the charts, but the psychologist makes it look like, do we really need the extra half? And I thought from before the answer was yes, that we yeah. were actually low on both sides. I agree with Eric. That chart that you gave us during that budget workshop yeah. made it look quick. made it actually look like we need a social worker and a psychologist. Yes. Or this one just makes us look like we need the social worker, not the yeah. psychologist. Okay. Yeah. And, and you could say, do a, a blended, you know, overall, if you think we need, you know, because again, we, we talked about being on the front of it, that, that it's not looking at the DERG and saying, well, we want to just be average on this. We think this is a, 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 a social problem in the U.S. that we can actually do something about it to help our, in our small community. And this is where we want to be. This is, in it's in our, you know, our, our long-term, long-range plan. Uh, there are goal three. I mean, all these things all fit together to say we want to be in the forefront of this, not at the back. But being numbers people, or to find it, you're going to look at that psychologist and say, hey, we're already a lot hot better than, than our others. So I, I would just check that. So otherwise, I, I think this is great and fully support what you have. Thanks. Good feedback. Bill and then Lee and I, I, I was, I just want to echo what, that's exactly what popped out to me is. This looks great, but this isn't. These slides don't sell things as as we discussed them at that meeting. And um, one th one item that I brought up at that meeting, and and I don't know whether it's data that you could collect, but um, on the DERG and so forth, is we we talk about you know ratio of 
um, you know, professionals to students. Um, this is within the school district, right? But within the town, the, it, it's it's the it's the you know the, oh, the right. village yeah, approach, yeah, yes. right? Yeah. It takes yeah. the village, mm -hmm. and what support right. we don't have in this town, may, maybe many of those other towns do. So, and who are those? You know, if, if there's a youth service bureau, then they probably have some additional people. So the ratio is really yeah. of yeah. of support staff to town. child to yeah. town. Yeah. You right. know, yeah. so um, I don't know. I, I I think that there's a way we, need to we, we know Maybe that we need it, but this Dave doesn't say first. it as well as we discussed it at the meeting. That's good feedback. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was also going to underscore um, a lot of what Eric and Bill said. I just I think the the number around the social worker student to ratio, student to social worker ratio was really staggering. And I think on the previous slide on slide 13, same thing with like 29 to date and 27 to date. It might also be compelling to have like right now at this point in the year, if we don't have any significant interventions, we're on track. We're we're on pace to have right. X number of incidents by the end of the year, because I think that would also be an incredibly staggering number. Right. Because we've already matched last year's number. Exactly. Right, yeah. right, and I think having that in print would be sure. powerful. Yeah. I, have a, I have a question about slide five. The budget for, the adopted budget for 2018 does that 2.38 percent? Yeah, good, good. Include the latest cut? No, there's no, e yeah, no. E I didn't put, I didn't put any ECS um, information in there, so that is actually a lower percentage for the current year. If, see, that's a problem. If it holds true, they did the holdback uh, of the 545,000 mm -hmm. roughly. They still could release some money to us. The governor could release some money, could hold more back. The governor. We don't know. So I didn't want to start messing around. But we may not dollars. have to give the. There's always the chance. They, there were statements know. that they could release some more money to us as right. we move What the about the money year. that we already cut? Is that included in the 238? 2.38? Didn't we already, didn't we make a smaller? ECS cut already? No, that got embedded into the, the full 546, I believe. I think we embedded, yeah, we embedded, it was embedded into the 546. Because we hadn't made, we, we had some thoughts on how we were going to cut that smaller amount. Oh, it was like 76,000, I think it yeah. was. But then we didn't, have, we just embedded that right into the 546 when we found that out um, back in November. So would it, I know you don't want to put, could you say if, we have to cut this much, this would be our percent increase? Um, we could end up, I mean, if you take another half a million off of that 2.38, that brings it down quite a bit, right? It does, yes. Yeah, it does. So, I mean, we could, I think that would warrant more discussion. I'm just so hesitant because I've been very because frustrated it, with ECS. Because one, it's not our adopted budget. It keeps changing. Yeah, I, That's I, I true. agree. That's I, not I our think adopted it would, budget. It would require another line below <laughs> there, like, uh, you know, realized budget or something else. Okay. I don't know and how I just have to say, I don't think you want to tell the town that we're operating at 1.99 yeah, yeah. because then they're going to say, oh, well, then you could do it again. Right, right. I, 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 I think that would have to be. <laughs> Go ahead and keep doing it. <laughs> so I'm question. just concerned about the whole adding of the staff when the town is thinking that we might have a bigger cut from the state that we haven't allowed Money for. Well, uh, that's what we were trying to offset with the reduction of I know. Two teachers and only played out with $56,000, $56, roughly $56,000 increase. But um, I think it's going to, you know, it's going to warrant some more discussion. ECS is a, a playing card that's coming in, pulled out, coming in, you know, so I don't know where it's going to land us as we you know, move forward. I think it's, when, when do we find out um, ECS, is it? The governor's budget is usually in the first week of February, like February, yeah. yeah. So, we'll, we might know more then, too, um, but uh, I just, I, it's been very tr problematic as to, you know, what are we gonna have, what are we not gonna have, uh, we don't know. We is, don't know. Is, is there any, uh, you know, I know you've, I mean, you've done a phenomenal job and you've 
you know, really cut like crazy and, and, but I wonder whether or not it would be easier to sell the psychologist social worker if we could get it to zero mm -hmm. rather than the have the 56,000 differential. Just thinking about the, the uh, presentation we got from our first selectman tonight about the money that they're about to spend and they're, say, they're saying it's cost neutral. So I wonder if we would have a better chance of selling this given the uncertainty at the state level if we could go in with it as being cost neutral rather than costing us, what, $56,000? You know, one playing card we kind of still have is health insurance. We, we set it at a rate, but we don't know it could go lower. Um, there could be more savings there, and as we move a little right. bit further, there's a potential that I, I just think it, you know right up beefing up the why would certainly also be helped by making it cost neutral, because yeah. yeah. that seems to sway a lot of people around here. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Okay. Mm. Great feedback. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is a great budget. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah. Thanks, um, well, Jeff. I just want to yep. ask and again. This kind of comes back to just. A, Make sure I understand. So the 2.59 percent increase—that's above. That's over the previous adopted budget. The previously adopted over the 2.38. Not, not, not the previous adopted budget minus the additional cut that we. That's right. We are exactly. Are. Yeah. ECS is not. It's, yeah, not, it's not embedded in there. There's no ECS. So it's there. actually then. It's actually so. a. Higher. Nor is there any pending pension in here obligation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we just didn't want to muddy the waters with that. We can talk more about that, you know, at our, at our budget discussion, but we just didn't want to muddy the waters. Not but we're, yeah, but we're actually, we're currently operating a budget on a, on, under a budget for this, this, this year of about $46 million. Yes. And if all holds true, so it's a bigger yeah, that five hundred and forty-five. So that's a littler number divided less. into a bigger yeah. So yeah, yeah it's a bigger eight, eight, so the percentage eight, yeah. increase is actually bigger than than. If all holds true, yes, it, it it would be. Yeah. We should probably figure out how to have that have that conversation up up front, so it, it's not so it's not it's it's you, we hit it head on, yeah. so to speak. So. And, and we should, with the governor's budget in February, you know, before we go to the Board of Finance, too, uh, we, you know, we'll know more. But I know, you know, for our purposes, yeah. um, we, we've got to have kind of a, a decision on an adopted budget at the board level yep. for yep. public yep. hearing. But, yep. but uh, yeah, I just want to be clear with that ECS because that's a uh, moving animal, moving target. Yeah, and ex I, I was uh, excellent. And thank you for including the uh, capital improvement. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, that would yes. I'm glad I that, love right? the capital improvement tabs. That, that might be my favorite yeah. tab. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I hate going to town meeting and going, oh, yeah, exactly. look at the Board of Ed capital exactly. improvement plan. I knew nothing about any of that. <laughs> That's always my favorite meeting. <laughs> So, so, so yeah, so, yeah. So, so we have we have historically in the past had multiple meetings after multiple meetings on budget deliberations, but we hadn't front loaded so much as Jeff has led us to with doing the budget workshops and things like that. So it's, it's changed. We it's changed. So the so the question is is um, and again I'm, I'm hopefully up to the up to the, the board if how many times we want to meet. Um, or you know, in terms of be, so we're right now we're we're scheduled to meet twice before the public hearing, yeah. right? Yep, sixteen um, twenty second. So we have a what we would call a special meeting scheduled for next Monday, okay? Tuesday or next Tuesday? Tuesday yeah, Martin Luther King on uh, Monday for next Tuesday to continue. Really, that's only there to drive so that we need more time to talk about the budget. Mm -hmm. We have the we have the twenty second, which is a regularly scheduled meeting. Which we can have, we can take a chunk, chunk of that and talk about the, about the budget. Jeff could go go away and, and come back with some more slides, kind of hitting on some of the things that we were just talking about. Um, I whatever people feel 
Yeah, and I, I'm also sensitive. Make a motion. No, no, because no. we can just cancel. If we can cancel a special meeting, or we can call them, we can call more meetings. If we want to, if you want to meet more time, more times on it, um, that's fine too. So it's just it's it's um, really up to the board's at discretion. We're missing two board members tonight, uh, but Jeff is committed to get uh, the. Uh, yep, we'll get the binder the information to both Alan and Jen. Um, I, it's what what people's pleasure. Is if we feel like you want to meet uh, next next Tuesday, we can we certainly can do that. If you feel that that where we're at right now, we're in pretty good shape, and we've got the 22nd to meet on, and then and then the public hearing, and then we've got time to deliberate if anything comes out of the public hearing discussion. Any Lee? What do you? What do you Oh, no, I'm, I'm thinking. You're I, thinking? Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm just looking for, I see some uh, nods uh, heading uh, yes. I, I'm okay. I mean, unless you tell me there's something new or different. You know, yeah, I, I want to kind of spend some time with mine. Yeah, freedom is Jeff. They're not, yeah, they're not. I think the suggestions you all made about yeah. oh, yeah. about the uh, fix, getting the getting the presentation now more refined, better for a person that hasn't gone through two, two budget workshops. Um, so when, you know, that's, yeah. that would be a, would be a good good thing to have but so so we I, I, you know what, uh, if I'm commenting on this document here I, I don't know if I want to show Jeff too but uh, I in terms of the meeting I don't I don't see that the need for the meeting okay. my concern is I, I like the idea of including the capital plan in there but my concern is it's it, it is um, it's kind of too incomplete suggesting, you know, we've got all of these buildings, we're looking at peanuts over the next 10 years in order to maintain buildings that I think, I think those dollars are way under. And that ties and there's in. things off the list that, 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 that things are things are not on the list that need to be on the list. Yeah. And I, I Go just ahead. wanted to make a comment and I can include that. That is the list that went to the town or will go to the town for the capital process. There's, I took off of that list ones that would come through our operating budget because it's under the $25,000 threshold. So I will, uh, I will include that as well. I just didn't know if it would be too confusing. So there is another component to that, which is- Yeah, you're uh, much more robust. There's another component of items that are under 25,000 or under that would have to go as part of our operating budget that's not in there. But, but I think, so Barbara and I, and Candace, I think we're kind of mm -hmm. talking, we, our recollection, again, it was before the holidays, so how we finished, we had that capital plan meeting, which was really, or whatever we called it, but the capital meeting, which I think was a really good meeting. We don't, we, we're troubling to recollect what the next step was from that meeting. I, I was thinking that we're still, there was still more information that we were waiting on to come that we we didn't yeah. we didn't yeah. have everything captured and yeah. we needed and Joe and whether it was a air handler well, we that Joe was going to we yeah, talked about getting an outside that's yeah. in in process that's yes, in process exactly. okay we, yep we found he a was, list of yeah we were going to get an outside person right. to look and give us a list of, of the all the school, stuff at the high school and the middle school yeah. that need to get done so that's, that's what we're waiting right for right yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so we are doing that. So this is this is really, I was wondering if, if what, what might make it better is somehow put a, a, a big stamp across the CIP plan like that says, you know, under construction well, for years, blank to blank or something, just kind of kind of say that, that we're still working, we're still working on this. And, yeah. and the action is, is to, is to um, look at, well, we met with uh, Kenny um, yep. Viega Ken Viega, from yep. ONG. And got a list of, of potential companies that can come in and do a capital assessment and so forth, and and, and, and that's on the and that's on the. And uh, he couldn't come in and just do it. No, he's they they, yeah. He says that that really is not in their scope because no. they're they don't have. There was an ex there was a reason yeah, that they, they're, they do not have they're not a full service. Um, Entity. You need an architect. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was like an, an architect. He did an architect. He an architect. That was it. Yeah. Well, then what about Al? It, and Al doesn't have the engineering. He doesn't have the engineering. So there, there's a, the company that we hired that we hired hired to do the Learn renovation project. Tech, Tektron is one that popped up on the mm -hmm. list, and they've got architects and engineering people. Yeah, right. 
um, all within the, yeah. the company. And, there's, and there are some other ones that Marianne, I think. So that would give us that more, more robust, what's, what's yeah. our middle school and high school need, you know, at, at this point. Elementaries, oh, we're okay. kind of leaving alone for right now. Obviously, they're under construction. Yeah. They're gonna be under construction, so. Um, so that's, that's in work, in, wor in the works. Um, but yeah, we've gotta continue to build upon that. That's a, a working, breathing document. Yep. Our committee needs to come back together as well. Yep. We've had one town meeting where we, you know, we've, we've shared you know, our, our thoughts, um, a rough draft. Uh, another one will be forthcoming probably later this month. So, um, plenty of time with CIP, but yeah, we need to continue the conversation. Yeah, I just, I don't, you know, I don't want to get us in the situation where we ended up with our schools as they are now. Agreed, right. that's right. Agreed, yep. We did have that conversation with them when we met with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So, okay. um, at least this gets us going and then um, it keeps us on, on target with that. Okay, so we have, con so we have con consensus about not meeting on next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Head nods. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll do that. Um, and please do send your questions. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. That's, that's, that's through my only caveat. The, the document again. Um, any questions? Or the layout. If you have any questions, Mariana and myself, um, please, and then send your questions, and we can work on those and get you the information back. Yep. Good. Good. Perfect. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Great. Okay, uh, next item is the elementary redistricting update. Um, yeah, no, nothing new. Um, last we left, um, when Mike Zuba presented, he was gonna go reach out to ONG um, for the renovation schedule. Um, I reached out to him, I haven't heard back, so I don't know. That should be in process, hopefully, but um, he won't be back again until February. Um, I think uh, I think it was, we identified February as uh, him returning. So, probably the next, you know, January 22nd, I'll have more information as to where he stands with that. Okay. So, that's it for that one. Good. Okay, that brings us into uh, some personnel items. Oh, has a ratification? Hmm? Yeah, just yeah, yep, yeah, 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 has a, yep, yep. The next item is the proposed ratification of agreement between the East Lyme Board of Education and the East Lyme Administrators Association uh, for July 1st, uh, 2018. That would go through June to through to June 30th of 2021. Wow, that's a long time. Here in 2021 mm -hmm. is uh, yeah, it's kind of scary. Um, but yeah, we'll, I'll get an opportunity to have eyes, you know, on this, and yep, yeah. so, um, and, and we hope that uh, you know you would ratify it. Uh, our um, many thanks to our administrators' association. Um, you know, they have ratified and, and agreed, and uh, we're looking to move forward with this. I think we've got a fair contract, and uh, we, uh, we look forward to putting it into action next year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody want to make a motion on this one? All right, I guess I will. Okay. I would like to move to ratify the proposed agreement between the East Lyme Board of Education and the East Lyme Administrators Association for the period July 1, 2018 through June 30th, 2021. I'll second. Second? Who seconded? Candace. Candace seconded. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Passes unanimously. Uh, and we have one uh, policy. Uh, it's up for a second reading. Um, Amy, do you want to? All right. Uh, okay. I would like to make a motion to recommend the revision of Board of Ed Policy 3541, non-instructional operations transportation. Be approved. Candace seconds it. <laughs> I'd like to say hooray. Hooray. Okay. okay. Any 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 discussion? On this? Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Stain. That one passes unanimously. <laughs> and that concludes the discussion and action items for the evening. And um, yeah. On to administrative uh, reports, Jeff. Uh, no, I mean I've done a lot of talk, enough talking. Just um, <laughs> snow days. Remember, we have not two snow days, but we have well, three. inclement weather days. We have four, four. Um, that we've given up so far. So that that puts now. graduation at the 21st of June, mm -hmm. if we stick to the 182 days, which I know Jamie loves. But um, 
we'll have to see where we, uh, where we land. Hopefully, again, it's still early, but um, I know <laughs> personally, we don't want to go into that next week of, you know, the 23rd, 24th, you know, so. Can't even get started uh, on 21st that. 21st of Friday. 21st, no, 21st is a Thursday, Thursday. 22nd is Friday. So I know graduation has been great the last two or three yeah. years on Friday. Yeah. It's worked out very well. Last except for last year. Yeah, right. except for having it, you know. But, oh, I know. <laughs> um, so just to put perspective, that's where, we're, where we're sitting right now. Year. So yeah. trying hard to avoid. That's a fun way to celebrate. It's my first time I didn't go to graduation. Good. That's it. Yep. Amy, anything to add? No, I'm just enjoying all the quality time I've had with Jeff Mariana. I think he has hit behind closed doors for hours. You guys singing Kumbaya. Lots of laughter. Oh, yeah. Well, it's been a blast. Mariana, anything to add? Thanks for doing a fantastic Thanks for a fantastic job. And I noticed that Mr. Newton actually had got some time off. Uh, yes. yes. During the holidays. During so the holidays. It yes, was great. Did. great. You were only there All of once. Our you were only there, I saw your car once. Half a day. Once. <laughs> half a day. Okay. So that was it. So half a day. Yeah. It was great. Um, good. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, committee, re committee reports. We did have a policy, a very productive policy. We had a hugely productive policy committee meeting. We covered six out of our seven scheduled policies. Yep. One, two, three are coming to the board for first readings, and four of them are gonna get a little bit more tweaking done to them. But we did, we did a very, very busy, productive hour. Good. See, anyone wants to see the hour? This was the hour? <laughs> <laughs> And there was also a very productive there AAA was. meeting there as well, was. Candace. We had a wonderful night, I have to say. Uh, the AAA, we went over after school activity opportunities for the elementary schools. And I'm happy to hear that the administration and the PTAs are going to be looking at it and seeing um, where we're going to go if it's going to all three schools will be continuing. I hope that they do. Um, and evaluating it, seeing how it can be done efficiently, effectively, and um, cohesively, which would be great. Uh, we'll look forward to an update from Amy, from all of you, and see where we're gonna go in February. We also talked about centralizing elementary school registration for 2018, 2019. Um, I'd, I'd like to cheer, but I'm not gonna quite yet. It's looking very good, which is great, um, but we'll have more in February, right, as an update. Um, but that's looking fantastic, and I think it'll be efficient and effective and one step closer to you know, our goals. Number three, we talked about Infinite Campus, the update, and usage is up, which is fantastic. Um, I know just personally I can utilize it more, and I'm, I'm very thankful for it, and I know that it's gonna progress and even get any better, so that's been really good. Uh, the Frontline update was really great, um, that it's just a hub of information, of just efficiency, and <laughs> all sorts of wonderful things, and everything's online, so it's just, it's been incredible, and that's all work that Amy has put together with her committee, and it's been fantastic. So we'll put all of the drafts on top with um, the minutes online. Good. We talked about the next meeting, uh, looking at the philosophy on looping and discussing that uh, tuition-based summer school program feedback to look at where we could go this year, um, this next summer actually, and possibly creative play school, having a summer uh, school option and having a planetarium option. Excellent. Amazing work. Excellent. Yeah, good Very good. Work. Okay, um, let's see. So that brings us now to board comments and future agenda topics. Anybody can say something? Jamie. <laughs> um, after hearing, I'm going to say Laurel Purcell. Purcell, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, who did an amazing job. I don't know how our school calendar w looks. Does it look like, or is it something that we're going to need to revisit? Our proposed school calendar for next year, based no, on her date. It's the year after. It's the year after we're yeah, gonna. Because I we just, I couldn't remember in the top of my head whether or not they coincided with her phasing schedule. Yeah, no, we're on target for for next year. It's just 
that when we look at the 1920 calendar. Okay. So that start. That's okay. Yeah. Um, and then my second one is is um, if anyone would like to join the Miracle League, um, we are looking for more people. If anybody wants to help us out, we have another meeting on the 25th at seven o'clock okay. at what Park and Rec. People to do, just so I mm. know. Well, we have everybody has some kind of a different job. Okay, just people taking just. Taking well, we have we have about. We had, I think, about 30 people at our first meeting, mm -hmm. and we broke up into subcommittees. Mm -hmm. And each of those subcommittees has committees that are doing different things. Like I'm doing venues. I'm helping go out and look for venues to do fundraising events and all these other things. Our wonderful Mike Susie over here is in charge of helping out with corporate fundraising. So he's working with other people to do that. Yep. Each person has jobs within. So if anyone would like to come to the main meeting it's the 25th at 7 and then you can decide from there if you'd like to join another committee and help out with your specialty where is that it is at um park and rec on the 27th 25th at seven o'clock so if anyone would like to join we would love to have more bodies okay and um if you could Where's like the meeting at? at park and rec so and if anybody Dave. Dave. Dave is oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm trying to figure out. I'm sorry. I'm just about ready to go to sleep. Um, <laughs> and if anybody would love to like our Facebook page. Oh, yeah. Miracle okay. League of Southeastern Connecticut mm -hmm. to help get our name out. And share it. And share, and share it. it. Okay. Very good. Excellent. So Dave is the main contact. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Jane. Any, anybody else? Any other things? No? Okay. Public comment? No? Nope. Uh, we have no need for an executive no. session. No. Thank goodness. Okay. I make a motion yeah. to adjourn. Yeah. Yeah. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Aye.